Hey everybody, Dilly welcome Dally, to Shilly Dialogue Shally. Choices Podcast. We were discussing the etymology of Dilly Dally Shilly Shally. And Keith was saying I, it's an I with an A for an E with an E. Yeah. Wait, and no, I, I, said, un- I, said, I said Dilly was, has an I and, and Dally has an A. That's the one. They're spelled the way the same way otherwise. I thought it was... It was like, you thought... It, so I was like, it's spelled the way it's, it's spelled the way it sounds. You could do it. And then you spelled it D-E-A-L-L-Y. And you made up a letter halfway through. And I was <laughs> and I was like, okay, it, this is harder than I thought it was. It's, <laughs> it's difficult. I, I, th- what's the word? What, what's that thing where you spell out each letter for the word? That, there's a term for it. Um, spelling? Ma- is it just phonetic? called spelling? Yeah, spelling? what are you saying? D-I-L-L-Y? The... It's alive. You're, you're just spelling out. That's, diffi- I'm that's sorry, difficult you don't for know me. What I'm talking about. You have in trouble no. there, bud. You know, that's well, difficult for me because all like Jello. J e l l o. It's alive. Oh, I see. We're we're cursed. No, we're we're Americans, diff- so we're f- forever cursed by advertising. Antico oh. water slides. <laughs> Flipping Everyone's got their local the regional ads famous. they heard a hundred times as a kid. Ride. Yeah, Mantica, Mantica water. water slides. Best fun fact of all: that fucking place is closed down, so it's just living there forever in my fucking head, rent free. Yep. Great, good job. And it doesn't even have a context anymore. <laughs> doesn't even doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna die like an old person in my bed. <laughs> like Mantico, it's like Grandpa. Ah. What the fuck is that? <laughs> what is we're, water? What are, we don't even. <laughs> What is water? We don't have water in you guys, Portugal. You guys just slid on water slides? Why? No. That's a waste of precious yeah, resources, exactly. Grandpa. It's like, slip Andrew it away, me. leave the Paris behind. We were, we, were, we were talking about the infamous Dilly Dally Shilly Shelly line from the English dub, at least, of Advent Children, Final Fantasy VII, uh, where Cloud angst, it does unmemorable angsting. He does an angst. Probably it's looking at his gray bandages or whatever. I don't know. That was my favorite movie at some point, which is weird because I never played Final Fantasy VII. It was just a really hype-ass video game cutscene of the movie, and that was enough for me yeah. when I was like 13 or whatever. Uh, That's great. I, I remember, I remember like, I, at one point I had a digital copy of that, game, of that movie, and that was when I realized the fucking uh, climactic final battle that happens in the city starts halfway through the movie. <laughs> Of a 90 yeah. minute movie, 45 minutes of it is the city battle at the end. That's how fucking long it is. Because <laughs> admittedly, it's like you got the B plot with like Rude and, Ru- and Reno, and Reno is my favorite character. And uh, then there's like they're all fighting like Bahamut or something. And then there's the Sephiroth battle after that. And there's all the different stages. So like a bunch of scenes separately keep happening. And there's also like Shinra stuff happening. And he does the Matrix dive out of a building. <laughs> and actually I can walk and whatever the fuck is happening in the movie. <laughs> but uh, that entire sequence, like there's so many sequences before that part. Like the church sequence and the and the glowing tree forest sequence and stuff. That it feels like it m- must be less of the movie. But it's half of the movie. <laughs> uh but no, she, but fucking uh, Cloud is angsting and and Tifa's just like dilly dally shilly shally and just dis- like in such a dismissive way like your concerns don't matter to me Cloud shut the fuck up but it's just well he does I mean he does need to save the world he doesn't have time yeah. to sit around be sad all day but like, now that fucking phrasing I've had I've had videos called dilly dally shilly shally and it's just like that fucking phrase is burned to my brain forever and it's just one phrase in one movie yeah. It doesn't even have larger context, because as far as how I can tell... How do you te- know like, how to write it even, then? Because uh, uh, Dilly Dally is real. <laughs> and oh, the other right, part's just an SH. Because that is the thing. It's like, he's like, ah, oh, so you stop Dilly Dallying and shit like that. Dilly Dally is a thing. I don't know what the fuck its origin is. If we can get, we could just start Googling shit, I guess. Uh, I, I gotta type Dilly Dally, then press delete to not have it autocomplete like, to Shilly Shally. <laughs> uh, waste of time, so- waste time through aimless wandering or indecision. It's also a rock Dilly band Dally. from 2009, Toronto. No, I, I know what the, I know what it means. Tool. I just don't know what it's from. Where's the phrase come from? Old French <laughs> from the 19th century. <laughs> old French? That's not old enough. The racy past century. of lollygag. <laughs> Whoa! How did I get? How is this the Wait, search result? What did you? What do you mean the racy past of lollygag? lollygagging, Wait. screwing around, goofing off, whatever you call it? We call it. We can all agree there are a lot of ways to talk about wasting time. 
well lollygag is historically known as lallygag it comes to english in the mid 19th century it means to dawdle however at the time lollygag also meant to fool around i mean lollygag is a very very horny sounding term it does sound <laughs> yes yes i don't know I mean, how to got, imagine really mm, it's got gag in it i mean but i got here from dilly dally which is confusing well Let's that's see. what you get when you go googling that's not what real linguists do they go and Looking yeah, but I'm not a linguist. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Wow. Well, we've also got dilly dally, which where the base word dally comes from old French hundreds of years ago. It meant to chat idly over. T so it's she, she's like, shut up with your dumb ass idle chatter. <laughs> Cloud. You're not. You're supposed to be a silent protagonist. Shut the fuck up. You're not supposed to start Is voicing he? concerns. I think he's completely as mute in this, oh, the game. No. Really? Yeah, and he suddenly is a voice protagonist in You mean to tell me movie. that... So, uh, I mean, I never which, played Final Fantasy Which is Fantasy technically VII. where all of his characterization comes from, because be that, before then, uh, he was that, like, vaguely childlike uh, silent protagonist of every JRPG, where they, like, you know, kind of, like, I, can only emote at things, so they can't be that broody. <laughs> I, can't, I can't believe it. <laughs> you're just yeah. you're breaking my world right now. Yeah, all he's the, a silent all protagonist life. in the original game. He just looks know, at people. <laughs> I know JRPGs have a lot of silent protagonists for many reasons, and many JRPGs have that, but I didn't know Final Fantasy specifically had it, because all my life I've heard people be like, oh, Western RPGs just don't have de well enough developed protagonists, they're not charismatic, and JRPGs just have so charismatic protagonists, you know, it really invested in that <laughs> thing, and I'm when, like, when, when was the first my... non-silent protagonist of a, of a Final Fantasy game? It was probably 9 or 10, right? Was Monkey Guy talky? Did you play Monkey Guy, Andrew? I, I never played Nine. There's, Nine there's apparently the, no. is the best one. Uh, keep it looks so playful with the monkey tail and the long hair and everything uh, and the androgyny. I play, so I, I've never actually... Well, I, I've only played Final Fantasy VIII. Um, I've watched CeeLo beat every other Final Fantasy. Oh. Um, Final Fantasy IX quotes. Final Fantasy IX, uh, I don't remember a lot of it, mostly because it was kind of just a cartoonish, silly wonderland. Zidane Tribal. Of... Oh yeah, there's a long list of Zidane Tribal quotes, so they clearly talk. So Zidane yeah. talks. That's apparently their okay. name, is Zidane. <laughs> okay, uh, okay, maybe... And, ti and Titus, Titus, infamously spoke <laughs> and laughed. Yes, <laughs> yes, he, uh, he had a lot to say, and none of it was good. <laughs> I, I, I really like, I like Titus. I like, Do you really? I, like, I, I like Final hate Fantasy that kid. I would fucking dunk that kid in a trash can as fast as possible. I fucking hate Titus. I wanted his pants as a kid. I wanted to have this like the one leg. <laughs> I would go around with like the zipper pants and I'd zip one to into being a short and the other one to being long and I'd go around like oh like Titus as a kid. Holy shit, that's great. Because it, it, it was like ten when that game came out and it was my first. It, it, either that or Golden Sun was like my first JRPG. And uh, I I feel like we've only gotten worse since. <laughs> I think my favorite Final Fantasy character is Riku. Well, if they're gonna if you're gonna Riku? they're gonna I thought she was yeah. voiced by Britney Spears for some reason. I was confused. Jeez, no. For she a was long not. time, I was convinced that was completely true, and I don't know why. <laughs> it's Terra. Okay, it's no Terra Strong. Where... Yeah, it's Terra Strong. I don't know why the you would think that. The actress that is that. everyone. Uh, but yeah, she is prolific. Like the, maybe that's the, because the you've heard that's her not everywhere. Jennifer Hale. <laughs> Yeah, well, the other look, America doesn't only, have a we, lot we of only voice have actors. <laughs> <laughs> we have two. Uh, it's, yeah, did oh, it's, she, it's, didn't it's, she play Jimmy Neutron? I mean, I mean, Timmy, Timmy, Tim, Timmy, Turner? Timmy Turner. There we go. There you go. Uh, Speaking, there's been some controversies it. related to that going on on Twitter lately. Well, <laughs> it's more just it's more the creator. Yeah, no, the creator, the Show creator like the keeps doing non commissions apparently. Which you, no, he doesn't do commissions. He keeps doing uh, he does art, art theft. He does art commissions where he just steals from somebody else's art. Like, he doesn't literally steal their art directly, but he basically practically just draws over it. And Oh, yeah, that kind the of, yeah. The most confusing... Like, people draw with references and whatnot. Like, they look up photos and, of people and try to draw the pose and stuff like that because it's hard to draw people. Like, it always... It's like figure of drawing and all that. But taking somebody else's drawing that's already a piece of art and then trying to using that as your reference and pretty much just recreating it is already like really iffy. But what's really baffling to me is just that he's known for a really specific art style and Danny Phantom and and, and I keep wanting to say Jimmy Neutron, uh, Fairly Odd Parents, and he doesn't do it. 
He just he's copying somebody else. It just it just looks like a random deviant art picture that he. It's like, but it's like the commission is the whole point is you're getting it from the guy that made that supposedly made uh, Danny Phantom and Fairly Odd Parents, and the fucking drawings he makes just don't look like that style at all. So it's like, what was the point? It's only it's it's so fucking odd. That is weird. We're, we're on a lot of tangents, but that that, that got around because like that was straight up. That <laughs> when your art theft is noticeable enough to be fucking trending on Twitter, that's going it's coming to me when I'm not even fucking following your st that stuff because I barely know who he was. And I'm like, I don't, I'm not like, I don't like follow the artists of my children's shows. You say you were on a lot of tangents. We literally started with a throwaway line that you said off camera, and then, yeah, and then you and said, then we just followed up on it. it. Yes, <laughs> but that's this because. Is the well, I only started then because I was like, I'm about to go on another tangent and I had to start the recording first. Mm. Otherwise, we just never would start. That's a, good, that's a fair point. That's what, specifically, this is what happened. I started quoting, <laughs> I started quoting the scene and all in my head. And I'm like, dilly dally, shilly shally. Dilly dally, shilly, sh dilly dally, shilly shally. <laughs> they just start saying it at each other back and forth because it's that thing where like you catch somebody off guard and the person quotes it back at you and then you say it again and all i can think about is fucking warriors of virtue my childhood fever dream that nobody else knows exists but i'll always remember with its live action <laughs> elemental captain planet kangaroo men and the mispronunciation of the word key or whatever at the whole movie uh and weird bastardization of eastern mythology but just the fucking looney tunes villain that is komodo is like we need to all sit down together someday and watch this movie and do a commentary on it and just experience it because it's so fucking baffling. This guy, <laughs> this guy's like the Duke Nukem of children's shows where he just keeps throwing around lines from other things that the kids don't won't know they're from, like warriors come out and play and stuff like that. And what the fuck? And he's just so fucking nuts the whole film that it's the whole it's the whole reason to watch the film. I looked but, up an image, and uh, the one that brought my eye the most <laughs> is titled Warriors of Virtue was a terrifying kangaroo-filled nightmare. Yeah, all the uh, the kangaroos are super uncanny because they're real. It's like <laughs> it's like the equivalent of the Sonic, o the, not Sonic 06, but the Sonic movie, like first model, where it's like, we got to show the actor's face kind of still. So they're like, they, they try to make it so they can kind of act. So they have like mostly just a human skull. Like, they just, like, you can see the shape of their skull. Oh, I see. And then they have, like, a muzzle and nose coming out of their face and then ears coming out of their heads. So they're, like, they're, like, uncanny they, they cat look girls. Like, like, it's, like, when so it's, like it's, it's, like, somebody drew a cat girl, but in the style of those, like, hyper-realistic Homer Simpson drawings where they try to make mm -hmm. a, a horrifying cartoon thing look too real. Basically, uh, all the kangaroos look like Ron Perlman. Oh, yeah, they all look like Ron. I think one of them might be Ron Perlman. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I okay, think one of them then one of them might be Rob Perlman. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> Warriors of Virtue it. 2, the return to Tao? Oh, that's what it was. It was Dao was the, supposed to be how it was really pronounced, I think, or something. What the fuck? Mm-hmm. There's a okay. sequel? <laughs> one of them might be has, I, I'd be surprised if none of them were Ron Perlman, because they all look like Ron Perlman. They do, they so do. Let me see. And it, it also backfired like crazy because the, the all that. Ron they still Perlman have enough stuff the on their movie. face that none of them can emote besides having the animatronic ears point in ways that would emote. Like, their faces yeah, that, cannot move. It's so, they're I so actually... fucked. Ron Perlman is not in the movie. <laughs> That's, but he is in spirit. But that movie has a scene where they're all, they're all fucking kidnapping oh. this kid. Because this one kid's from like the world. He came with, he came into this world with a book because it's a fucking Zaibot, Zai, not Zaibatsu. What's it called? What's the world uh, anime Wakazashi? thing Wakazashi? You, you, we keep talking about? A wrong world anime? Wrong hmm. world? Kaichi. Like <laughs> Saibatsu. Oh, <laughs> What's the word? Are, are you talking about like... E isekai. Wait, isekai. Isekai. It's an isekai, isekai movie okay. where the oh. protagonist is like not supposed to be there because uh, they're from the real world. Because he fell, he fell into a whirlpool and somehow ended up in the Warriors of Virtue Land and it made no sense. He, he fell in a sewer and presumably died. So like, I don't know what the fuck... But he but he had this chosen one book and nobody can read it except supposedly him. Everyone thinks that he'll be able to read it. So they, the Komodo's trying to kidnap him the whole fucking movie and get him in the room with the book and make him read it. And when he's finally gonna fucking make him read it, he's like, "What? What? What does it say?" And he's like, "Shit happens." <laughs> 
Shit. Wow. And then like I was like, shit happens. And like weird lady other other girl, it's like, shit happens. Shit happens. Shit happens. <laughs> like they, they're all saying it in a circle back to back and forth like dilly dally shilly shally for like 30 seconds, and the whole time you're like, can they say shit in a kid's movie? I don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> And like, you're like, more it's weird actually, about bureaucracy. Ro- it's roles. kind of a good scene because it's fucking with them, obviously, because he can't read it, and that's the that's the takeaway, I guess. But it was just like, what a fucking weird, surreal scene of everyone, like the protagonist and the antagonist of the movie, just saying shit happens back and forth with like a <laughs> mystical look, like they're trying to read into what it means. <laughs> just wow, what a beautiful movie! I have it on VHS. It's my only VHS. I, I have the Star Wars trilogy. Or like the original Star Wars trilogy, I think, maybe, Unspecialized. And just Warriors of Virtue, that's my VHS collection from thrift <laughs> stores. Wow. <laughs> I found it for a dollar, and I'm like, I mean, I have to. It's got those, it's got that irritating children's packaging where it's, it's like padded. Remember how like kid, kids VHS VHSs tapes? had like a, like a white rim to them that was plastic? Because, so they wouldn't get broken by kids, I assume. Because normal, oh, v- normal VHSs came in a cardboard sleeve that was just form mm-hmm. fitting, but but children's VHSs were these big bulky things with like a white plastic rim. Mm-hmm. Which I assume was to make them not get broken by children <laughs> or something. Yeah, at least a little bit more like toy packaging. Yeah. Anyway, I, I, all I just v- want to remind all everyone that Warriors that of Virtue seen. exists. I have, I this is yeah this is a reality that I was not aware of and. Uh... I mean, I imagine there's a lot of stuff like this. Basically, movies that probably should have been animated rather than real life. <laughs> but I'm, I'm glad it wasn't. <laughs> I mean, my favorite well, part is the five frames per second climactic battle scene. <laughs> wow. Like, it's stylish. Oh, that was a style for a while, wasn't it? It they was like, it's stylized if it's low frame rate, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> it just looks blurry. Yeah, it's just, it's just, let's cover, it covers up all the bad choreography. But there's like, like we, there's like weird lines that might leak like sneak into videos where I'm like look at me look at me or something that I don't even know if it, I don't know if it's ever come out but there's just origin stories for weird dumb things that come out of me sometimes the weird references that every once in a while fucking nightmare <laughs> yeah this is a uh, this sounds like a fever dream because I have no concept of I also want to be Komodo for Halloween. <laughs> I mean, you, you're the only one holding yourself back from that. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, if I fucking... If I ever get to a fucking convention, the fucking Komodo cosplay. <laughs> You'll be like the only one. They'll be like literally... Someone no, will know. Will like... Someone always knows. That's like the fucking joke about conventions is that every obscure possible character, somebody's playing them, including like whatever memes happened in the last three years, even if they're not people. <laughs> like like the, <laughs> the, the the meme can be like a sign and be like, it's me. It's 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 me. I'm the but her emails sign that's in the flood. I'm I i am cosplaying as that. Like you don't you don't fucking know. People are crazy. <laughs> <laughs> if I ever cosplay the meme it'd have to be the the little girl running away from the dog. No, wait, that's not the dog. Which one is the... <laughs> what, what does she run away from? Oh, my God. For, for Do you what? know the one? The uh, little the, girl the kid the that's, bubbles? like, looking... The, it's, like, this this chubby little girl that's looking back over her shoulder by just sprinting away. Yeah. I, I think it's yeah, always think... photoshopped out of context, even. It's her, like, original situations. So There like, is no, there is no but her emails cosplay. That f- but what her emails? I actually don't know that meme. Let me look it up. I don't know what butthurt means. No, but no, her do... emails. The emails. Oh. Hmm. I see other things that are not memes. But... <laughs> That's I'll just put it in the chat. There you go. Oh. That's pretty... Oh, God. There's iterations on this. Oh, no. Oh, oh. no. Oh, God. <laughs> I just found <laughs> one that the picture... How that? I just, I just found one that is... Uh... It's Handmaid's Tale. <laughs> and they're all, oh. like, doing their forced, like, shopping for oranges in their dystopian nightmare where everyone has to wear hoods like they're horses. Uh, and, the sub- and the subtitles but her emails. <laughs> it's like, oh, God. <laughs> this went through iterations over the years that I didn't. Yeah. I, didn't... <laughs> I, I guess I... things iterate online. We're in directions. Yeah, this is a... <laughs> We're going in a lot of directions today. 
Uh, do, does anybody have a topic for today? <laughs> good we question. Should, it's uh, good to ask that after you start, right? Well, people yeah. watching know the, the title of the episode, so they know. We <laughs> <just don't> know. <laughs> they know more than we do about what this video is about. <laughs> oh, no. Dude, the, uh... I, some of these videos have been desperate, where I'm like, I, I finish, and I'm like, God, that was like an almost three-hour fever dream. And it's not necessarily <laughs> that it was a bad podcast, but I can't remember what... There wasn't like a theme I can remember for the whole thing. So like I'll be like uh, I'll like skip around and I'll find a conversation I remember I'm like okay the whole video is named and thumbnail based on that conversation that I found at like <laughs> minute forty two so, of the three hour video. This is probably only relevant to me and I apologize, but I do have something that's been on my mind. Uh, Why are you? I'm worried so, now that you're apologizing for it. So because it's like it just it's such a it's probably the most pedantic dumb thing, but I went to go see a movie yesterday. Oh. And oh, because you went to a trailers... drive through Yeah, it was a my drive first time up? going to a drive-in movie. Drive in. A drive-in. Yeah. Drive-in movie. Uh, it was my first time going. Um, <laughs> Can you imagine it's... a drive through theater where you have to <laughs> wait 90 minutes at the window to watch a movie oh, and then the next guy gets it? <laughs> That would be. That sounds like that sounds like something you would see in one of those like futuristic fifties things. Like in the As, future, yeah. people can just drive up and watch a movie, and it's like, yeah, why? One that at sounds a time. awful. What the fuck? As, <laughs> As Stephanie would say, that is Kafka esque. Yeah, that's not great. But uh, there's, so there's one. So what's what impresses me about driving movie theaters is that they somehow uh, still have the same issue of please turn your fucking phone off, except it's please turn your fucking headlights off. Where what? people just keep their fucking headlights on, which is great, solid for a movie where the entire premise is you have to watch a light being projected from a distance onto a screen <laughs> with no other light being getting in the way of that light. Like people just don't understand the basics of fucking actual, like just general, like general science. They're like, oh, it's weird. The movie just could, looks kind of blown out. It's like, yeah, because you're a fucking asshole. Turn your lights off. Um, my God. So. So I was watching this movie. There's trailers in the beginning. One of the trailers was for this uh, gritty-looking detective cop thing. And I was like, oh, hmm. okay, that's weird. And so I'm the first a cop person and I don't take a shower. Kind of. And so the, the cop was like, the cop sounded really weird. I was like, I think that's Chris Rock. And it was Chris Rock uh, playing a serious role as a detective. And I thought that was going to be interesting to pull off. Uh, cause he still sounds like the zebra from Madagascar and he just won't <laughs> ever stop sounding like the zebra from Madagascar. So I don't know if that's a possibility to be serious after that, but I, I'll give it to him. I but mean, the point he, is, that's just what he sounded like before that too. But that's the yeah, problem. He doesn't sound like a serious person. He like, if he was, if he was mad at me, I wouldn't know he was mad at me because he sounds, <laughs> he just sounds funny all the time. He always sounds yeah. like he's going to tell you a joke, which is like, it's great if you cast him for any comedy role. Uh, you know, like he was great in uh, the movie with I, uh, I forget the name of the movie now. Uh, the, where him I mean, and, he's uh, he's in like all Chan. those he's in like all those Adam Sandler movies. Is he? And, yeah, like he's in Grown Ups. He's one of the main. He's like one of the four dudes in Grown Ups or five or whatever. He's in the cast of the people that are the Grown Ups. <laughs> okay, but he's he, one uh, of the Grown Ups. Don't you know? One of the, he's the a Mighty Morphin right. Power Grown Ups. <laughs> so so he's uh okay so what was i getting at so okay so first off i was i was surprised about uh surprised that chris rock was in a serious movie secondly the movie started feeling a little say like a little familiar i was like huh um uh i was like this is kind of weird it seems almost like uh, a movie it, like it seems like a horror movie i've seen before and then it goes to the point where it's like he's holding a saw and he's handcuffed to a radiator and i went that's really memorable isn't that like a saw movie and then it shows the title and it's called spiral from the book of spa uh, from the book of saw and i was like from the wait is there a is there a fucking religion about this now what's the spiral the from it, the book of saw so it's apparently, I think this is their way of not making like a Saw 27, is that they're going <laughs> to call their new movies something from the book of Saw. They also and already like, did that before when they called the last movie Jigsaw. Yeah, After, but instead of I think that Saw didn't work. 8, what I, it would have been. I don't think that worked out as well as they hoped. 
So I think this is like oh, their Spiral's new also going to have Angry Man in it. It also has Samuel L. Jackson yeah. in it too. <laughs> yes, uh, which is which he does sound like he's angry all the time. So that works out. He can fit in a serious role. He's always mad. Chris Rock um, and Samuel L. Jackson in a song. But yeah, movie. Chris Rock and Samuel L. Jackson is such a juxtaposition when you're listening to them in the trailer, where it's like it's like. You know, he's just, he's like, his, his, his tone of voice is very funny, man. And then you have Samuel Jackson's like, get the fuck out of there. And it's like, what, oh, and what his is pa- happening? And his partner is the guy from Handmaid's Tale. Bam, brought it all back. I just knew the future brought of this conversation. Back. I knew where we're going. It's, so anyways, I want to point out that if this is he's, a thing. He's the cuck-er in that movie. <laughs> in that show. Cuck-er. Not the cuck-er. If this is going to be a, th- this is gonna be a thing key? where oh, in, instead of putting numbers after your 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 movies you're gonna you're gonna make like a stupid catch line i'm gonna politely ask you to fucking not that's really dumb i don't like it (laughs) because you watched it's all by mistake and he didn't want to no because from the book of saw sounds fucking stupid because there is no book of saw that's not a thing there is no actual fucking book of saw it the it first sounds... movie, the first movie saw is so like the title itself is part of the movie because it draws your attention to the item of the saw, and you watch the whole movie, you know the saw is there. It's like a movie about the saw, but it really isn't at the end of the day. And it's like I think the title is but, integral to the first movie, and then they counts, just yeah forgot like, about it somehow. <laughs> Does there no saw but, in any of and, the other movies? And like, but that's the I mean, weird thing. Sometimes. It's like this is this yeah, is the, the entire movie. franchise is called Saw because somebody cut their their arm off or leg off once. Yeah, at the beginning, they didn't even a spoiler. They didn't even the the first movie doesn't end with that. Yeah, it does. Yeah, no, he does. doesn't. You didn't watch yeah. the movie apparently. <laughs> yeah, he, he how do you think his, he fucking got out? No, he, he crushed, literally cut his. He crushed his his foot to not cut it off. Oh, did he do that? You don't. Oh, no. so, yeah, yeah. So it's spoilers, but yeah. Yeah, I guess so. He, I just he, remember. He, he, I just remember. Spe- but, but more so than the movie is because obviously that's the threat of the first movie and then i remember him coming up in a later movie and as he's like crawling down a hallway and it's like this is what mm-hmm. happened after the first movie i'm like this is such a fucking convoluted nightmare of a, so, of a so, movie yeah, series so true so true and so, and so spiral is going to be the ninth installment in saw but instead of calling it saw nine uh they're calling it spiral from the book of saw and i thought that was dumb and i hated it and yeah that is annoying i i think it's confusing because it like I, I get it it's there to like obfuscate the fact that it's the night saw movie and you're really fucking stretching this franchise out way too much but you know you don't want to go to like you don't want to be at the level where you're like friday the 13th 15 and you're like there's a lot of fucking numbers in this thing uh or like left for dead five and you're like wait how many fucking wait. four deads are there <laughs> yeah. like at, at some point you just it starts becoming you know silly but i also don't there's, it doesn't make any sense in the context of like, okay, so is this, is it continuing or is it not? Can I just watch Spiral without watching the other saws? I don't know because it don't doesn't have it. a number. And so don't because it, it doesn't have a, well, I'm not going to watch it. I don't watch that. I'm, I'm <laughs> saying, the, but like as a consumer, like how the hell, like if, if I went to the movie to go watch Die Hard and it says just, it says like Christmas from the book of Die Hard, I'd be like, what the fuck does that mean? What Die Hard is this? Is this like the third Die Hard? Fourth Die Hard? Like, I think all Die Hards take place on Christmas. What the fuck? Like, <laughs> what does this even mean? Like, I don't know. It's, just you, you. After the second one, it was just a meme, really. Mm-hmm. Like, imagine if Final <laughs> Fantasy was just like Sephiroth from the book of Final Fantasy. And you're like, what the fuck does that mean? What, what, what Final Fantasy I mean, is that? Which have, one? They have pretty obnoxious titles already. Like Lightning oh, yeah. Returns, Final Fantasy Thirteen. It's like okay, but, I need to do research the about number. where the. But it's not <laughs> the number. It's not the number because there's already no, no, a Final that's... Fantasy Thirteen, and then there's a Lightning Returns, Final Fantasy Thirteen, and because it's titled so badly, it doesn't even imply the fact that there's a Final Fantasy te- Thirteen Two, which happened in yeah. between them, because <laughs> that's yeah, the yeah, third yeah, one. Yeah, uh, and then that, of course, that, that, and, that and have, yeah, also Crisis Core, Final Fantasy Seven, and also there's, there's like six Final Fantasy Sevens now. Including a remake there's that's a, still called Final Fantasy VII. The, which, is only part, which is only part one of the a, remake. But then there's a remake yeah. of that remake and a mobile version of that remake. And there's a mobile version of thirteen, of 15. <laughs> I want to die. Yeah, there's a remake of the remake of Final Fantasy uh, VII. Yeah. So, like, the PS5 is getting a remake of the remake, which is just, like, 
It, they can't do a remake. I, it's just the PS5 edition of the game. Back in the no, day, it's, every it's game called was... something else. It has its own title. Oh, uh, that's that's yeah. bad. That's bad. Because back in the day, like be, games I, would, I, they should call the part two of Final Fantasy VII remake Final Fantasy VII Crisis Core. <laughs> Just the opposite of the other title. Just like how it's like Resident Evil, Biohazard, Biohazard, Resident Evil. Also, let by me, the way, me. by the way. Uh, I mean, Final F or, uh, Resident Evil's doing this too, though. Instead of Resident Evil 8, it's Resident Evil Village. And you're like, all right. We've been like, over this, this though. It work? is called Resident yeah. Evil 8 still in many. Well, like, yeah, it's but in the saying, title. Like, putting, Even if like, it's mixed, how no, much no, no, it's no, included. That's correctly. what I don't like, though. It isn't. It, it's in like, this one, it isn't. No, it's it isn't really, the title. they dropped the eight in the title, at least according to Wikipedia. It's remember the eight is in there by the color, like it it's colors just, yeah, over. Yeah, it's just the color. It, it's not the official title. But, but the yeah, but like the listing of the game is supposed to be Village, Resident mm -hmm. Evil Village. Yeah, yeah. According to Wikipedia, anyway, I didn't look too far. What I was gonna say is that back in the day, like Need for Speed One had even uh, their own website calls it that. That, like Capcom's yeah, own yeah, fucking yeah, website yeah. calls yeah, it. Yeah, I'm Resident just saying Evil that Village. the eight is right there in the logo, so it's not ambiguous. It's, you don't have that, to like. But that, you don't. You have to be really obtuse to be confused about like, oh man, which just, one is this one? It's like, well, it's right there. It says it. It's right there. Just fucking say it. Just yeah, they, say they, it's they, 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 yeah, they can add. It, they can add like, it to the text, and they should. But also, it's not the problem. There's no. There's the confusion problem. It doesn't exist here. Like there is no storefront where you can buy Resident Evil Eight. Without seeing the banner slash logo somewhere, which show, says eight in it, mm -hmm. so it's like it's not yes. it's not as it's not these other problems where it's just like what the fuck is this? I have to fucking research what's going on. Uh, it's, not, just, it's, not, it's not like me when I'm a kid being like I'm gonna buy Half Life Two Episode One to start my Half Life Two adventure, and it's like that's actually part two. What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so there's a whole game, and Episode One is the sequel yeah. to, to the original. It's like what? Well, isn't a Half Life yeah. Three episode one, or Half Life I, I episodes have, episode one? <laughs> I just have a really big thing about numerical number, like numerical values. <laughs> You're about to, to say products. numerical numbers. <laughs> yeah, I was. I, I have a problem with that. Like, I if you're gonna call, if you're gonna, if you're gonna commit to putting numbers at the at the end of your product, commit to the fucking number. Do it for life. I want to see you at fucking assassin's creed 27 <laughs> i, I want say. you there if yeah. you're not gonna fucking do that then don't put a fucking number in there because you're gonna piss me off when it when you cut it off halfway through the fucking franchise going like oh i don't know man this looks like too many numbers i think audiences are gonna get upset today i don't have the first no, game that's not the like, reason that's not why they do that you know it right why why, why would they, they cut it off why, for why marketing you... reasons only like yeah, that's what i'm saying you market it because you don't want people to feel excluded that they you want people yeah, to yeah, buy yeah. the product you, you don't want them, you don't them to want feel them like they have to like Oh, I didn't play the yeah. other one, so I won't know what's going on or whatever. So you just exactly. confuse exactly. them. Exactly. Yeah. Then don't fucking put a number in your fucking product. Like, you don't have to do that. There is no rule that but says you have is... to call every single game one, two, three, four, movie. One, two, three. You can just call it a fucking movie. But like, the thing it's, is, it's up fine. until a few years ago, the number two and the number three after the title, that was really profitable. Because it would yeah. boost the, retroactively boost the sales of the older games. Then commit, but they don't, <laughs> don't do fucking leave. I mean, the Ubisoft fucking Assassin's Creed is the nightmare version of this because they went one and yeah. two, and then they went Brotherhood, and they went to the cursed subtitle that I would always think means your game's I trash. Forget. Revelations. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Which they, they, I like they only that took. One. I it only took, it only took four games to get to Revelations. Revelations is trash. It's oh, so uh, much worse I'm, than the previous game. I'm Brotherhood is the peak of the franchise. Oh, maybe it's Brotherhood. I, I know one of those two I like. Brotherhood is the, the one where you could press a button and he whistles and then a fucking an assassin drops from orbit and instantly kills the person you're looking at. You're like, yeah! <laughs> <laughs> this is stupid. <laughs> Revelation was like, now Ezio is old and we have to finish his story because it's so important, even though we basically wrapped it up in the first game. But now there's a trilogy of Ezio for some reason. Uh, but no, what's, what's fucked up about, on top of the fact that they had a Revelations game, which Ubisoft keeps doing because there's also a Mist Revelations and a, and a Prince of Persia Revelations, uh, all by the same <laughs> fucking publisher. But then the next game was three. The sixth installment yeah. of the series. And then it's like, oh, okay, so you're saying that like each the number installment. Well, yeah, because you, well, you, you have to the... you gotta count the Assassin's Creed PlayStation Portable game. You got to count Assassin's yeah. Creed uh, Liberation and Discovery. 
and stuff like that. Liberation is after. Is it? Is the yeah, Assassin's it's after three. three. Yeah. Liberation. But yeah. then you're like, okay, at least we have a rule. Clearly, we have a rule now where we have a new number whenever we change like eras or whatever. Like, okay, so like, <laughs> like the original Assassin's Creed setting. That was very like that would, where they were like, uh, please don't be offended that, but with our depiction of Muslims, here's our we're made by an multicultural team. Like sub- subtitle disclaimer at the beginning, like that was Assassin's Creed one, then two was <laughs> the Renaissance, and then was three, that it was... three was America, and then four was America. The next game was four. <laughs> they immediately jumped to four after three, but it was just the fucking same nope, area and assets in the and yeah. But that was a that was the the that was the that was a little bit of a side thing, and that it was a less uh, no noticeable handheld game, like the fact oh. that pe- like like how people don't know that there's a second Altair game because it's on mm-hmm. the PSP. But uh, and I, this probably handheld uh, SEO games, so there's probably like six SEO games or some shit like that. But yeah, like <laughs> immediately, immediately after establishing this pattern, that like okay, every time we change settings, we're, that's going to be the new number, and then we're going to like you know spend a few t- ep- games in this in the in that setting each time, because then we can yep. recoup our losses of making an entire <laughs> new open world of assets by making more games in that setting. Immediately, the next American game was four. My like, God, fucking damn it! And then they never numbered them again. And then of course, there's and always that's... the uh, the funny example of like what is it Mario Kart just didn't have numbers for a long time. But then out yeah. of nowhere, one of them was called, like, Seven. <laughs> and then uh, there was all these arguments online trying to figure out what the seven Mario Karts were. Because there's definitely more than seven. And they're like, I don't know which ones count? Why did they pick seven? <laughs> well, <laughs> To get that late at, in the franchise and decide they're numbered. <laughs> at least it's not as bad as the... Well... At least you I don't think there was ever a Mario Kart 2. <laughs> but the thing is, think of Final <laughs> Fantasy. Final Fantasy... What? Which one is it? Is it Final Fantasy VI? That is Final Fantasy III in the US and Final Fantasy VI. Was it that late? I feel like the numbers were earlier than that when it was confusing. Was it? I feel like it was somewhere. I, th- I feel like that was contained to the first five, but I could be wrong. I could be wrong. Yeah, I, I thought don't they know. Got, but at least I thought they know. got caught up by the time we got to like for, six. Sorry, for people, which ones? Because people always say six is the best one, and that'd be confusing if it wasn't always six. <laughs> Final, uh, f- are you talking about Final Fantasy? Yeah, yeah. I think Final Fantasy, Final Fantasy five is indeed. It's yeah, like yeah. four and Final two were mixed a, or something. Th- yeah, they had uh, they had some issues with uh, yeah they had an issue with two and four. Um, they got swapped around because they stopped. They didn't they didn't do very well in the U.S. So like. One uh one came out. It didn't do very good because America didn't like RPGs. And then they brought four over, and that did really well. But that counted as two because that was the second game that we knew about. Yeah. And so then uh in Japan, it was like, oh, we had like a ton of Final Fantasies. They were really good. And it's like, uh uh oh, uh, <laughs> fuck. Uh, this is Final Fantasy f- f- uh, two, but four. But it's honestly, like, okay. Honestly, I would say that when a game like Final Fantasy is brought over to the West, like, because there's such a huge adaptation in terms of the writing and even the interface and everything, the game has to be remade almost. Especially older games, they basically had to to redo so much stuff that it kind of is okay that it's it's just not the same number, but because it's still a different game. Ultimately, you play... Like, that, like, what I mean is, I remember back in the day, people being like, learning Japanese just to... I, I I didn't never knew anybody personally that like that, but but uh, you know learning Japanese that, just to be able that's to enjoy. That's Andrew wanted to be, not for Final Fantasy, but no. But yeah, yeah. but there's I, such a wealth of <laughs> Japanese only games that you really need. I'm to learn Japanese so I can put the anime directly in my veins. I I mean Straight I own from the tap. <laughs> I own a couple of Japanese Super Nintendo games that I bought when I was over there because I don't I mean I don't really need to read to play them. Uh, they they work just fine. But uh, they, they can only have so much text to begin with back then. Yeah, but also <laughs> it's actually really good because those games are made for literal fucking babies. So it's a really great way to learn how to read Japanese mm-hmm. uh, at a basic level when you're, you know, when your game is made for like the ages between one and, and ten uh, years yeah. old. And you're like, yeah, I'm smart enough to read a ten, like as a ten year old. And I look at it, and I'm like, I can't fucking read any of this. I'm gonna just die. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's. it's but you know, it, it helps because again, it's it's very basic words. They're not using any like crazy katakana. And I'm not sitting there like, what is a uh, hydroscopic like, microscope? Like I don't fucking like the kanji for that is probably a nightmare. <laughs> but here, it's just like here's the here's jump. 
you want to learn how to say jump it's like okay yeah that, i could do that i could learn that um and, and hopefully and so it's a japanese word and not jump but 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 the problem with final fantasy is that final fantasy likes to make up their own fucking words which means you get weird ass fucking katakana uh this is like the problem that one piece has getting translated is that like a lot of character names are kind of like silly puns or really like over the top um uh were yeah like one of the one of the characters is called uh cat viper but the word for it is uh it's like neko uh it's like neko something and when you when you hard translate it it's just translated to uh a a cat that is a viper and so like they had to like call him up and be like is that the fucking name of your stupid character and Oda's like no 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 it's like it's it's like cat yeah. viper like get it and he's like oh, oh that's not how this translates so like and Final Fantasy is the same way, where Final Fantasy is like, and then there's Aether Crystals, and you're like, what the fuck is an Aether? Uh, a crystal that produces the foul Aether. Like, no, 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 the foul sea and the sea and the sea is. Yeah, that's, this that's why confusing. sometimes, like, that's why sometimes when you look at stuff, you're like, how the fuck did, what, where did you even come up with this name? And a lot of the times the name isn't nearly as, it doesn't, it's not nearly as stupid. Um... Everyone just uh, needs to hire the Yakuza of- tra- uh, localization team, because they're all doing it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they're you know it costs a lot of money, Keith. The talent, <laughs> that, talent yeah, come they cheap. <laughs> put a lot of fucking money into those games to make yeah, them right. Well, I mean, it's, it's way it's, to fucking that's stumble another, at the finish line, <laughs> it's, not it's localize it correctly the, for your biggest <laughs> other, the, your second biggest market or or biggest market, depending on how that I mean, balance lands between the United States and Japan for your game. Yeah, that's the that's the but that's the big problem <clears> of dealing with uh dealing with translations that's a big problem with like you know that's why again language is kind of important you need to if you're gonna if you're going to say things you need to make sure that it's clear and understandable to the person that you're trying to get the point across and that's why like don't fucking take away numbers out of your fucking products if people have built this like already pre-existing understanding of this world by by its numerical value like if I go to the store and I'm going to buy a new phone, I don't want to see that there's fucking four phones with different letters next to them because that's not how you fucking named them for the past 20 years. Why did you do this? What is an iPhone <laughs> X? Is that somehow different from an iPhone S? Why the fuck does Xbox not, do that too? Is the X. Xbox is the Xbox I'm Series X different the from Xbox. the Xbox Series 1? Like what is an Xbox 1 versus an Xbox? Like it's when they called it the three, when they called Xbox? it the Xbox 360, just so it wouldn't be the Xbox Two versus the PlayStation Three. I was like, sure, whatever. I, this, I wasn't. It, that's fine. No, I, there, that but was the a Xbox hard One, one and the this. Xbox <laughs> Series X are both such nightmare names. Excuse me, it isn't Xbox Series X. It's just I, I actually, it's the official title is Xbox Series X and Xbox Series S. It's the whole thing they because they have two of the, them. They have the two, and they're like there's two PS4s, but they're not named confusing, stupid things. Like they're different Xboxes. Because like, they don't have because Series they X and S shit. sound like Here's different console generations. It's it's infuriating. I well, don't because the, the PS5 it. the PS5 Pro is like the the PS5 is like the five and the, and the five Pro or something maybe or whatever it is. I don't know. There's one of them has I, a disc. It might just be called the disc one. <laughs> it might just be called uh, Xbox yeah. PS5 disc. Yeah, it's just because it has I, I disc. Think so. Yeah, I don't I, think they have even names. Which ruins its form factor a bit, but also it looks stupid no matter what you look at. That's, look at. Yeah, and that's also, fine. Like, it's, it, it would be stupid of me not as somebody who needs access to things to not get the disc one in case there's some stupid edge case where I need it for, for some reason. But it's a hundred bucks. It's it's just like, it, it's infuriating. Like the Xbox 360 was the, par, the beginning of my resentment towards this <laughs> idea. that mm-hmm. if you're going to change the name of something then you best change it to in a, in a way that makes sense. Like, if you called it the Xbox 2, literally spelt out the 2, that would be fine. <laughs> but to call it 360, I was like, what happened to the other fucking, like, 319 Xboxes? Where did they go? Did I miss out on them? Did I fucking wake up out of a coma? Like, what the fuck did you do? 358. Mess- Whatever. Uh, I, I, don't know, I don't know math. See? Sorry, I, I thought it was... Three, something I thought of 320. They really anyways, should have called it Xbox is, 2. The new, and this new is the Xbox. problem. J- 
just call it Xbox Two, and then we wouldn't have Xbox One, which is the third Xbox. You fucking asshole! I mean, Why would you yeah, do that? That was the worst one. Like, god damn it! <laughs> just fucking they call it had, Xbox Three. They did that knowing everyone calls the original Xbox the Xbox One, and then they called the third one the Xbox One. I'm like, I'm so fucking mad at you right now. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be mad at you until I die. They really dumped it though. <laughs> Because they could like after the Xbox One, they should have called it Xbox Two. It would it would have costed sense. you zero fucking dollars to not be a jackass. How do you and look you at the Wii U's it? branding problem and be like, we're gonna call the next one the Xbox the Xbox Series S? <laughs> that won't confuse anybody. <laughs> that won't sound like it's just a, another Xbox Pro or whatever or Xbox Especially One because X. The Xbox I guess was one their X, Pro. Yeah. Yes. The, the, uh, That's what's more infuriating is that their fucking Pro version was the Xbox One X, which is like. I mean that's if a prank. Was, somebody, somebody that's it, fucking so memeing got bought, yeah. a job, and then they they didn't catch if, that he was fucking with them because he literally made the acronym Xbox, Xbox yes. Series. X. Oh wait, shit. What? No, that's an S. Shit. Never mind. No, no you're talking X. about the Xbox One X. Is is Xbox. yeah X, yeah so it's right? Xbox I, I forgot One what X. it's called again. Yeah, yeah, Xbox yeah. One X, X B O X. It's like they're okay. They're just fucking with you. It's the Xbox that uh, acronym is which Xbox, is, which is stupid because <laughs> Xbox S X, which is X X X X B X X X B S X or S B S S. That's <laughs> like what a, what a stupid fucking acronym. What? How did you do this? Like Microsoft me, is a multi billion dollar company and you couldn't fucking hire one single person to name your fucking product not shit for me having the xbox 360 name was worth it just to watch a bunch of people who are bad at math just dunk on themselves for years because they had all make this it was a bunch of fucking playstation fans that kept making the (laughs) same joke but the joke was never good because literally the first time it was said it was already wrong mathematically but they kept repeating it for like a decade (laughs) And it was just, it was because they would always say, it's called the Xbox 360 because you turn 360 degrees and walk away. It's like, they don't know what a 360 is. <laughs> You'd end up yeah. facing the same direction. You just face, it's you a 180. Around, It'd be called yeah. the 180. They didn't, it's, yeah. it's not called yeah. the Xbox 180. <laughs> and then they try to justify it. Like, no, it's because you, you spin and then you just, you just it was the I saw no I heard, I heard so many moments of like somebody not refusing to back down and trying to justify why actually it was a smart joke or whatever and none of them worked and it was really it, it, they would just embarrass themselves more because they they were already wrong but then they try to double down and it's like dude there's you've had so many chances to hear that this thing doesn't make sense it's the it's what it's immediately what anyone says the moment anyone else says this thing is how it's like what the fuck did you just say but somehow it propagated <laughs> because children are stupid for like a decade, like generation upon generation of new children would encounter the stupid ass phrase and they would keep repeating it. And it's like it's like the yep. early year. It's kind of dark in a way because it's like the early years of like Facebook groups, essentially, where it's like clearly that is a completely insular community that just says this joke back and forth at each other and never encounters somebody that questions it for a second. And that's why so many people somehow have it breeding within them, because the number of people hearing it from each other is more than the people hearing it. that will spread it to people that will then actually counter it. But it's Keep. so it's like a what? Yeah. Um, sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm sort of interrupting. You. I'm sorry. Um, go ahead. Go ahead. You just you asked me to stop like four times. I know. I'm, I'm just. I'm, what I'm, I'm, I interrupted you, and I wasn't aware. I was. Uh, the thing is, do you know how you know? Irregardless is a new word, and it's just new meanings for new words and all that. What if 360 now means 180? Because, <laughs> but because it's just that's a all... mathematical measurement. <laughs> I don't. I don't like this at all. The millennium, the millennium, the millennium, I can't even say words. The millennium starts on 1st January of 20, or 2001, not the year 2000, Keith. I don't care. No one, that, that's, 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 <laughs> that's a mathematical that's, thing that's as a, well. That's the stupid hill to die on. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Because a millennium only comes up once per every, like, 20th lifetime so there is no like standard or precedent that really ma- is applicable to life in a way that like what a ruler means does <laughs> i interrupted you for this i'm so sorry <laughs> I'll, 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 i'm gonna fucking sideline this entire discussion on the discussion of chris rock from way back 
Oh, uh, right. I'm going to have to deal with, because I'm, I'm never watching fucking Spiral. I'm so done with the Saw franchise. I made it I'm, I made it through like four, and I'm like, this is not worth it. They, it peaked at two, and then it was miserable. Mm. Uh, but the, I think uh, it peaked at one. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I'm going to have to deal with my own case of trying to take Chris Rock seriously in a drama. And it's uh, it's because he's going to... I, mean, I say he's going to. It's it's only in my future. It's in the past in real life. I just haven't watched it yet. But he's the protagonist of Fargo season four, and Fargo's one of my favorite shows. Oh. And I'm like, oh, Chris Rock though. Oh no! And like, I get like, it that is Fargo this like a has thing? a thing. Is he trying to like Fargo trying to like rebrand he, himself? Yeah, I don't, I don't know. But Fargo has a long history, and and Coen Brothers in general, of casting comedy actors in their shows and movies that are themselves like kind of black comedy dramas and it kind of works because they're kind of supposed to be funny in certain ways but like think about how much of a step down this is from the previous scene season being ewan mcgregor playing his own twin two ewan mcgregors hmm. acting across from each other looking completely different because they didn't do the identical twin thing they're like wildly divergent and like i think they might have been identical originally but they're like <clears throat> because of, because they have diff they're different lives and they live in different classes and so on, they look visibly different. Like one of them has massive hair loss, and one of them looks like they have like expensive fake looking at hair plugs, and like they look like different people completely. But they're playing, but they're in scenes with each other as twins and stuff like that. And it's like, it's like, and it's it's great. He's he's great and it's fun. Going from that to Chris Rock is just. <laughs> uh, and like of course, like and Andrew will know. Season one had Martin Freeman and. Um, Ooh. Bad Santa. What's his name? Bad, bad Santa. <laughs> Billy Bob Thornton and Martin Freeman yeah. were in that season. <laughs> then the next one had the guy from The Conjuring and stuff like that. Like they have, they've had a decent number of act. Uh, Owen Wilson's brother, Owen or Wilson. <laughs> I don't know. What, what, what's his what name? the fuck? I can't remember Owen Wilson's brother's name. <clears throat> and, uh, and that one had a. Uh, Kirsten Dunst oh, and, the, and the Luke Wilson and and I had the guy from the last season of uh, Breaking Bad that's in a bunch of stuff now. Like I'm thinking of any things like that. Like they have a lot, a great series of actors in these in these seasons. And then season four is Chris Rock, and I'm like, oh fuck, I've never liked him in anything. First of all, among other things, he's got that comedy special that has done more damage than good, where he just keeps going on about the N word. And he's like he he oh. just he does the distinction between like like black people and n words, and he keeps doing that, and it's like a whole shtick. And like I just remember hearing that on like you'd hear you'd hear it like being played by white people growing up, and I didn't think about it that much at the time. But I'm like, oh my god, this is like giving white people like an instruction manual on like when the n word's basically okay to use. And it's like no 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 no. Like it's it's like it's it's up there yeah. with like the. Uh, in boondocks when they had like the n-word moment episode which became a whole odyssey throughout those 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 seasons and so on but like a way worse version of that where it's it works as like an instruction manual like there's classes of black people like the good black people and the bad black oh, people that's, like that's chris that's the rock thing that, and it's just that's like the thing oh. that's referenced at the beginning of the office there's one joke somebody uh, that um michael scott makes in the office in the first season where he's talking yeah. specifically about that thing. I've never seen that that routine, but he I, talks I about Chris Rock, and that's where I yeah. hate that special. It ages worse every year, and like I I fucking I, I I look back in my life and I'm like side eyeing people that I remember listening to that special and like the way that they interact with race issues now and how they reacted to 2020 stuff, and I'm like, mm, yep that. That put that that uh that special put bad into the world more or less. <laughs> that was not a yeah. a helpful thing. But no, the uh but the other thing is like going through like partly because he was like a he was he was like this this uh this comedy special actor and stuff and he had other stuff going on. Uh, Chris Rock is not in stuff. Like if you try to look at his movies list, there's no movies you care about <laughs> ever. <laughs> Uh, yeah, he's just it, a comedian. For, like, for like Madagascar right? is up there in his top four, along with like Longest Yard, the the fucking the water yeah. like the Water Boy style. Wait, was the Water Boy a different Adam Sandler movie? Yes. <laughs> On top yes. of Longest Yard being another yes. football Adam Sandler movie. 
Yes. <laughs> what the fuck? The longest yard. He was in that, but then he's in like whatever. Like who the fuck knows all these other things he's he's been in. I guess he had a show that was Everybody Hates Chris, which was about him growing up, and that's that seems to be kind of listed as like the. It seems to come up like it's the highlight of his entire career, more or less, which is he does the voiceovers, and it's about a dramatization of his childhood and so on. But no, I had, I had to I had to come in here because I knew the comments were coming. That's Chris Tucker in Rush Hour, Andrew. Oh shit, is it? Yeah, Chris Tucker is in Rush Hour. So no, you can't even give Chris Rock that. <laughs> Chris Tucker is in Rush Hour and Silver Linings Playbook and most critically Fifth Element with the weird hair and the dress and everything where he's like that. That's all Chris Tucker. None of that is Chris Rock. Chris Rock's never been in an interesting movie. <laughs> <laughs> Man, my God. He does have I, I was saying that you were saying that he's never in anything. But wow, he I'm has sorry. A, I feel really bad now. I thought that was Chris Rock. He has so I, many. He has a lot of movies to his name, though. No, he's in so many Chris. movies, in part because he yeah. works with Adam Sandler to some extent, and he's also just mm -hmm. in a lot of like air quotes I movies guess, that are I like guess because I, comedy specials I guess mind, and events. Yeah, that's true. I guess my mind defaulted to assuming it would be a Chris Rock movie because the whole premise is just like no, Chris Rock's goofy, not a good enough comedy actor to be in Rush Hour. <laughs> what the fuck? Damn, that's I wasn't a, being that mean. No, he's never Jesus. been in a good movie. He, he was nope. in Madagascar. That's and a his, fun movie. And his stand-up was bad, too. <laughs> wow. Everything he did was bad. That's why I'm this fucking seems... horrified to watch Fargo season four, because I'm like, if it was Chris Tucker, I'd be like, hey, it's the guy from Rush Hour. This could be fun. Maybe he could, do, <laughs> maybe he could pull it off. I don't know. But the like, because because the, the, that's the shtick sometimes is he, they cast these comedy actors in these dramatic roles and they and, so, and you get to see them flex and everything. But Chris Tucker's never been good at comedy either. So like, why? So like, there's mm. nothing to build from. I'm like, I just, Chris Rocker's ne Chris Rock's never been good at, at comedy or anything. Like, I don't, I don't, I just I've never liked movie. him in anything. I just found a movie w that you forgot that he w took part in because it's a really good movie by by re with really good people. Lethal Weapon 4 has Chris Rock in it. Does he matter in it? Ah, come on. I thought you were <laughs> going to react to it being Lethal Weapon 4. Because <laughs> it's famously, you know. Uh, anyway, I've uh, never watched he, a single Lethal Weapon. Well, it's it's like, it's... it's <laughs> Checkmate. Don't, no, yeah, I don't need to watch it. <laughs> um, no, he does. He actually plays a, a... Is one of the... It's not one of the main cast, but he's like, he has lines and whatnot. And whatnot. You know how it goes in a... Die yeah. Hard style movie. I just I will say Chris Tucker know. Chris Tucker's filmography takes a fucking nose a fucking like turn. It takes a turn because <laughs> you're scrolling through. It's like, oh that's not even that many movies. He was like Meteor Man, House Party, some a, a couple of other movies, Fifth Element, the Jackie Brown, the Rush Hour trilogy, Silver Lang's playbook. Hmm. And you're like, oh, it just kind of goes quiet after that. And then it's like, oh, he, he was in a couple things on TV, but not no, not really. That's one live show, one award ceremony, and then after like almost a decade of silence, what comes up is Jeffrey Epstein, Filthy Rich. You're like, oh no, oh, crap. <laughs> I've I've not watched that, but uh, that's not a good thing to come up in. <laughs> nope. <laughs> Especially yep. after being mysteriously absent for like a decade, you're like, oh no. <laughs> It's like, hey, uh, weird, Chris Tucker. Chris Tucker's trending again after having not been in a movie for a decade. I'm sure it's good news. No, it's just that that's just a documentary, right? It's probably he's in the industry. It probably has. It's it's a the context is bad. It's not a a documentary you want to be coming up in in really for well, but, almost any reason, really. But like Jeffrey Epstein was a very big <clears throat> name in the industry, like. If there's gonna be people people talking about him and stuff like that, they like like it's not what I'm saying. It's not an indictment on Chris Tucker. It's just he's his he has lines in the documentary, right? It's it's just worrying. It comes yeah. across as an accusation. The way that like any yeah. association with Jeffrey Epstein comes across as like ha being associated with Harvey Weinstein just means that you like either profited from in some way being related to the stuff that he was like because he's just so prolific of, with uh with Miramax and stuff or mm -hmm. you were a victim of of uh Harvey Weinstein but coming up 
in any kind of listing that says Jeffrey Epstein, it's like that that <laughs> that it comes with the assumption of complicitness and then you're like oh god and then you have to look closer to find out that if they're not complicit or something like it's a real rough starting point whenever you whenever you have somebody come up with next to that name like oh no granted it's mm. like it's heavily weaponized like people people are uh because he was uh, involved in so many different people in general like that that people uh it's the it's the popular thing of 2020 and so on is to just anybody you don't like you associate with jeffrey epstein and you and you just say they're like oh yeah they sure bought a lot of tickets on that plane and stuff like that and then uh people don't look any further and just assume you're telling the truth about it uh mm -hmm. and that's just an ongoing thing it's not a fun topic you know it is a fun topic no. to just immediately change tra track i i uh i i, <laughs> I made a <laughs> i'm just gonna decide to go straight to this i made a poll go for it. on youtube i don't know if you saw it but just to I fuck did. with people. I, I voted in both of them. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I, well, the newest, the newest one today is I, I read oh. a poll that's what's the best JRPG franchise, <laughs> and the uh, the fucking the the entries are Dark Souls, Legend of Zelda, Monster Hunter, and Yakuza, <laughs> and that's the only options. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Oof, it's a cute I, uh, Yakuza, obviously, as we well know. I wanted to see more argument about what makes sense and what doesn't make sense and to really have people like have a kind of a breakdown about what genre means more. But instead, it's mostly just people uh, people voting unironically, which is fine because I believe these are all JRPGs. Uh, and then people being like, oh my god, how could you make this list and not include Chrono Trigger or, or not include dragon quest or whatever the fuck like they just say they'll just say one thing like why isn't this thing in here what well, obviously it's final fantasy and like with the suggestion being that this list would totally make sense but it has to have final fantasy in it, and that's like the only thing like that they, they, people like not picking up on the obvious sampling bias here of like the weirdness <laughs> of this list and ha and like like the fact that the p people wanting Dragon Quest don't notice it also doesn't have Final Fantasy and doesn't have Tales of and doesn't have like Persona, for example. These are, these are all games that you've played in in the channel. Did you play Final Fantasy and Dragon Quest? I've never played Dragon Quest. I've played Final Fantasy on the channel uh, oh, Type Zero the... and Fifteen, and the MMO, yeah, yeah, and like... yeah, and Fourteen, yeah. Uh, and, uh, 14 is the best one, I guess? Because Type 0 and 15 are really bad? Oh, I think we've talked about it before. Yeah, 15 seems alright at first, and then just loses his mind. Uh, and then Type 0 was basically never good. The only part where it I, felt uh, kind of good was the early chapters of, like, trying to, like, let myself, like, just give it time to get good <laughs> like that was the best feelings i had of the game was when i was giving it the benefit of the doubt for a while like maybe it'll get good later is the <laughs> that's that's not a good sign i think it, it there's such a especially with story driven games in general it doesn't have to be jrpgs it happens in a lot of genres there's such a, an incentive to get attached to the story or to the characters <laughs> or to the setting and forget the gameplay the gameplay is literally there to pad the length of the game and many times it's very obvious that the designers thought of it like that but sometimes it's not as obvious but the thing is in in our memories as players and i include myself in that um it, for many reasons but it's like we look back at a game and say this game was really good but we forget that only like half of it was actually the bits that were good the rest was like either bad combat like in fallout new vegas or uh or bad exploration or random encounters that don't need any that don't need to be there. Oh yeah, no, there's, there's, a, same... there's a Noah Caldwell Gervais video that came out yesterday about Cyberpunk. And specifically, mm -hmm. he he did this amazing connection that made me go like, "Oh my god, I'm the pigeon." Where he uh <laughs> he took the Skinner's box metaphor slash experiment and applied it to the the act of playing Cyberpunk and trying to find the side quests that actually have content in them. Because they're just buried amongst hundreds of trash side quests that just waste your time, as you saw, because <laughs> I think you watched my playthrough. And, yeah. uh, like, 
there's so many inconsequential trash things, but you just keep going because like a second ago, like in my case, like I just saw Jesse Cox and he had a bad dick operation. And it's like, man, poor Jesse Cox. And then the next one is just like thing I forget instantly. Next one is thing I forget instantly. And you're just like, you like four hours later, you realize you're still fucking pressing that button in the Skinner's box, hoping that the next oh. quest turns out to be a, like secretly one of the ones you'll remember later. Because you, th- those four hours that happen in between, you literally don't remember doing. Like you like immediately it zaps out of your brain. Like the actual like the because the game labels its quests so poorly in categorization of like level of quality and so on. You're so desperately trying to find the ones that'll actually be kind of neat that you actually are just the pigeon pecking at the button because every tenth, every, every random tenth to fourteenth time, it might give you a treat. <laughs> and it's like that's the act of doing side <laughs> yeah. quests in this bloated trash game, which is what you were talking about with the idea of like how much of the game could be of a game could be taken up by not the thing you remember as being why it was good. And like, yeah, absolutely, you're you're totally right in that, but. The thing is, I think I I, thought, I felt that the ending was a sweet left a sweet taste in 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 terms of writing. Like I could see somebody walking away with that Skinner's box mindset. And sometimes, oh, yeah, and sometimes it's all that you remember is the final thing that happened. It's like, it, oh, the, yeah, because the, the ending, this final emotion was okay. Yeah, which is kind of the opposite, the the perfect opposite of of The Witcher Three, which that has amazing side quests. Well, there's a few that are not amazing, but like. 90% or 80% of the side quests are incredible. And then the ending is sort of like, eh, well, here it is. I mean, it's very epic in terms of the action scenes and all that. But in terms of storyline, it isn't particularly, you know, all that. It's fucking like, nail-biting, I- though, because they make the fate of a of one of the major characters up in the air. Mm-hmm. And it has yeah. several different outcomes. And you can't just, like, you don't just make, you don't just, like, pick a button at the end. And that's what causes it to happen. So you're like, I don't know what's going to happen. Did I do it right? And so, like... <laughs> The villain itself is like the fucking the walker north of the wall in Game of Thrones. Yeah. It's like it never speaks, so it can't be that interesting to defeat it. And it's like the same thing goes for the wild hunt. It's like there's some sort of armored dudes that you stab and then they aren't there anymore. But they did have stakes to it that was made it really mm-hmm. engaging despite that. Like pretty much just I, despite that. <laughs> yeah, I, th- I, th- I th- like my my biggest memory of The Witcher 3 is the side quests. Like many of the side quests, I, I I do remember that some of them were bad, and one of them in particular was the worst. But in in general, like the side quests were just refreshingly good. And like I'm not used to seeing side quests like that in in RPGs, like because you you always think of side quests as uh, like fleshing out the I'm saying like a lot, uh, like <laughs> fleshing out the world, and 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 they're supposed to allow you to immerse yourself in the world. Their side quests are usually designed from a utilitarian perspective of okay, we need quests that allow the player to get to this point in the narrative. And for The Witcher 3, no, that's what you're there to do. Like, if you play The Witcher 3 and only focus on side quests, you have a blast and you're good. Yeah. And they, and they were clearly designed with more than just immersing you in the world in mind. And, and the main quests are great, refreshing. too, for the most part, but they specifically thought, benefit from you doing the side quests because the side mm-hmm. quests inform and sometimes even change the results of the main quests. Yes, yes. But in terms of an ending, I thought the blood and wine... DLC, the main quest specifically, the side quests conversely in Blood and Wine were terrible, but the main quest it's in itself in the Blood Get and Wine Get to hang DLC. out with your vampire, bro. Uh, there were too many fetch quests in the Blood and Wine DLC. No, I mean the main story is you hanging out with your oh, vampire, the main story, bro. Yeah, yeah, And the ending, like the, the stakes and, and, and all that, it, I thought it was great. It, it, it was very satisfying. But I can't yeah, same, believe... Same like, thing I don't with understand the, how the... the, the interesting story in a cold heart i think it was called with mm-hmm. the, the curse guy yeah. and and his yeah, that whole was, gambit that was a blast i like i like that dlc i think the the blood and wine was more flashy as a dlc but i think i like the cold hearts or whatever yeah. it's called because uh, one of them was mas- one of them was basically just a main story uh bonus campaign and the other one was mm-hmm. an entire new region so it had to come with all the side content and all of that and they just kind of do the whole rigmarole again and it was kind of a bit much mm-hmm. i did like the twists where you find out you're in that special place and it's like wait wait a minute what's going on <laughs> i like that bit it's not gonna hit the same when i play it again because i know it's coming yeah <laughs> but, but I, I, like what what, what right. i'm saying is the same company that made that game made cyberpunk it's like yep. it's like it, it's not even the same company 
Because it probably isn't. They probably fired all their interns or something. <laughs> you know, how, you know how AAA. How AAA is. I mean, yeah, like, like co companies do hemorrhage uh, talent so quickly and trade people around so rapidly that, like, yeah, every five years, you do wonder how much each company even is the same company anymore. Yeah. And The Witcher 3 was also, like, it, it, it stank of a, of a well-produced... So, not well-produced, or I mean, not necessarily well-produced, but, like, the biggest problem of The Witcher 3... I think in making a game like that is managing all the people that are going to work on it. And then what happens when you actually end up managing them properly, more or less, it is that the, the talent of those people that work on the game rises to the top. It's, it's not a game that, that screams of authorial intent. It, it's a game that screams of, look at all these talented people that worked on this game and somehow they managed to work together. And then cyberpunk is the opposite of that. It's like, look at all this person, look at this one person that had an idea and then mismanaged the whole project from start to finish. <laughs> It's just, oh my god and then this, they, I, I, this I kind really of has been that... just like a few years of like every major blockbuster project being mismanaged by the people in, in power and just increasingly you're just wondering how anyone gets in power in the first place because clearly it's not merit because <laughs> no one oh, knows no, what they're no, doing no, no. all the time it it, of course like, it isn't like because it like just like how on tv you watch like you watch game of thrones just crash and burn and you watch star wars crash and burn <laughs> like these are like the biggest properties in the world and no one can manage a fucking project and then video games which are hard to, to run but like you think somebody in the industry knows how to do it by now but like all the biggest things are also just these nightmares because you keep having these like it's like at some point you're like wow like i, I guess on some level, I guess I, we got to at least hand it to Call of Duty that they know how to make a game every year and not some, like just uh, fundamentally well, mismanage how to even not, do that. Let's they're not probably, get ahead of They're ourselves. probably abusing their workers like everyone in the AAA yes, industry it's is. They yeah. are the worst. And also, yeah. most of the Call of Duty games suck. But yeah. you're but right. They, but they're, they not, they're not fundamentally like yeah. failures. Yeah. <laughs> They're not Cyberpunk 2077. <laughs> like they're bland or whatever, but they do make like yeah. a fully featured new campaign full of all new levels and and like like, like all new Actually, content some, and some so on. Some of the on. new ones don't have campaines. And they go some well. There's like I think that was just once. Oh okay okay. Because they wanted to make like they like the big thing this year is battle royale. So instead of making a campaign, we're going to make a big continent to play battle royale on. And that was like what that game oh had. God. And I I don't think people were totally psyched about that necessarily <laughs> i remember uh, when i was when i was young I, like this was probably 2008 or somewhere around there where there was this one game and I, I don't remember which game it was but you might be able to clear my mind on that there's there was this one game that was online only released as for xbox and for pc and stuff and it cost 40 bucks instead of the usual 60 bucks but in in they lowered the price because it didn't have any single player content, and people were like, "Oh no, it's too expensive for an online only game." Uh, Titanfall. These days, it might have been yes, it might have been Titanfall. I don't remember exactly. Actually, but... I think Titanfall was full price. Yeah, okay, so it might price. have been before that. Then I, I remember like it was this big, at least in the communities I I was part of, they were all upset, and it was like a general consensus that you shouldn't pay that much for an online only game because like you could pay for. It's very was the big thing, and it was like fifteen bucks. It it's has it, been. 50 it's interesting bucks. how nonsensical it is because, like, yeah, like, like people kept buying these sixty dollars games, and because we have tracking data, we can know that, like, like I, because I, I, I grappled with this in Halo Two. Like, I would be playing the Halo Two campaign, and all my friends would be playing online still, and I would play online too. But like, I'd, I'd actually go back and play the campaign again every like month or so while I was playing because I was playing the game so much, and it's like. Everyone like, why are you playing the campaign? And you look at people's achievements, and they've never played the campaign of Halo Two. And you're like, <laughs> wait, 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 what? And like, and as and as we go further and further, we have more and more data, and we can see more and more like like a shockingly large percentage of, for example, Call of Duty players never play the campaign at all mm -hmm. in the entire yeah. in like for several consecutive games in many cases, and yet they feel like they're getting ripped off if it's not there. <laughs> So it's like, and, and so yeah, there's an, I remember it being an ongoing thought across several podcasts I was listening to that people kept arguing this point that like, hey, maybe just don't make a campaign and put out your game for $40 and just make the thing that everyone buys the game for anyway, like Overwatch did, for example, and just 
just commit to that and just be chill with that. And that's fine, right? Like that's, that should be cool. And I heard that across several podcasts and like, you don't hear the dissenting audience. So I don't know what their thoughts are, but like, and I, like I agreed with the idea and I thought that was a perfectly valid idea until it <laughs> happened. Then it happened and people were really mad in several instances of there being multiplayer only games. And it might be because there were franchises that previously had campaigns, but yeah, of course it like, was definitely complains that. Yeah. It was like, and there, there would be people like there, there, there are certainly people who like the campaigns of Call of Duty games. Like, oh, yeah, that, yeah. that was my first 360 experience was Call of Duty Two, and I loved that campaign. It at was the time. so good. I liked it. It was a I really cool, a really cool World War Two thing. I, and I, yeah, like that was that was great. You throw the potatoes instead of the was, grenades. I mean, how how it was how so hard. <laughs> it was really hard because yeah. you try to play on the highest difficulty and get through it and so on. And like, oh, the tank came through the wall, and what's happening? Uh, <laughs> It was really overwhelming, but it was my only 360 game for a while, so I was trying to make it count. Uh, and, uh, and had a great time with that. And so, like, yeah, like, this is going to be the portion of the, the audience that only that wants either only wants the campaigns or just, you know, also wants the campaigns. But statistically, you know that they are a minority of the audience. But the way that Internet discourse works is there was this overwhelming outrage about the fact that there was about, about a handful of shooting games trying to not have a campaign for once. And it was like isn't this what you it's like isn't this what people wanted or also or why are you mad at this thing being gone that you never used to begin with and it's like to some extent it's uh it could just be the minority group just being very very loud and on the other hand it could be like just the internet loves being mad <laughs> they love <laughs> that no matter what like side you're on or what type of person you are or what group it is like everyone seems to snowball into these rage things and they, they they like to all get mad about the thing that's the thing everyone's mad at this month within your sphere and so to some extent it might just be that people just kind of getting some catharsis out of shouting about a thing but it was like it was definitely a big whiplash when <laughs> the thing that i thought was clearly a good idea happened and then no one seemed to think it was a good idea but then of course no the, yeah like overwatch that. comes out and it's fine apparently so i'm confused yeah. I don't remember. Yeah, no, being, I don't remember people like, being mad at Overwatch, or people, or, or the player unknown battlegrounds or Fortnite. Yeah, but or PUBG like was a twenty dollar like indie game, so oh, it's like really? a different was, expectation. Oh, I, it was, oh. I think it was twenty dollars, no, and it's like a Steam release and so on. PUBG. PUBG was sixty for the longest time, and they what? rarely did discounts. Was it sixty dollars, Andrew? I thought it was twenty. I'm uh, pretty sure it was full price. Are you, are you sure you're not thinking of Daisy? No, Daisy was just a because uh, Daisy was an armor mod, mod. and armor I think was sixty dollars maybe or more. <clears throat> yeah, Not yeah, more, yeah, but, but more thought, than twenty. Yeah, yeah. yeah for I sure. thought armor. I thought Daisy was the one that was like, "What the fuck? I have to pay." You had to buy. You had to buy like armor buy, too. Yeah, I didn't think that PUBG was sixty bucks. I thought. I, I thought it was not recently, obviously, but no, for like it looks like it's at least it thirty. Was, I might. I'm. I'm wrong then. then. Yeah, I don't. I don't think it was ever sixty because it was always like this weird early access indie game thing oh let's see PUBG original indie might be pushing it a little bit oh <laughs> it looks like it looks <laughs> like it's from the same developer that made terra online yeah so, so maybe I not think entirely uh, indie but 30. it felt um, indie because of its fucking production value <laughs> <laughs> so it yeah, kind of gets, it gets a, an aesthetic pass but uh yeah, I just remember people. Be, I remember people listfully being like, "Oh, I wish Overwatch had a campaign because they like the characters and their animations and their and their personalities and the fact that there was nothing to it felt disappointing." But I don't remember being like, "Oh my god, how could you put out a shooter without a campaign?" It's because it's like, yeah, Rainbow Six Siege, uh, Overwatch, like this Counter Strike. It should be completely normal to just make an online competitive game and not have to make a campaign. But I I, appara that... apparently if you have like the baggage of having previously had campaigns in that IP, then you know people get f that's going to be a big problem. <laughs> I also think that a game like uh, Overwatch doesn't really work. A multiplayer game like Overwatch doesn't really work if you have a campaign that supports all that cast. Not because Why? the game itself is not going to work or the it multiplayer. Would, it would be so hard that it's basically never happened before, which is definitely the, the challenge is, that they're facing in their you... upcoming game. How do you write a campaign for such a tremendous cast that is so unique? Like, it's 30 do, do main mean, characters. Do you mean story? What? Yeah, how do you write a story for... It's an enormous uh, cast. Dynasty so Warriors. Unique. Dynasty Warriors has explored say, like, this exact problem in two different ways. And I like both of their solutions. 
So one thing mm. Dynasty Warriors does is uh, games one through like six, you, there was a separate campaign for every single character, <laughs> but each That's, campaign yeah. was only six missions long. And so, yeah, that's a good solution. What happened, and, it, and it's usually certain milestones happened for everybody. Like, everybody went to Hulao Gate to fight Lubu in like mission one or two. <laughs> uh, some, and depending on who they were, they had the Yellow Turban Rebellion, which Zhang Zhe, say, say hello to my magic. <laughs> and up in mission one, the voice acting was incredible. Uh, and then they split off because it became the th after the first two missions, it became the three kingdoms warring at each other. And so depending on yeah. what character you, you picked, they were in, in different battles in that process. And then you got a different ending for each character. But it was like relatively minor customization per character. It was kind of like a, wow, what, well, look at everyone's forking branch through this thing. But then uh, Samurai Warriors did a different thing where Samurai Warriors did... Here is a like six to ten mission campaign per faction, and there was yeah, like six I've, factions, and each of those factions you would then pick a different character within the roster of available people for that faction, and then like seven, mm -hmm. I think Final Fantasy seven and eight, uh, pff, Dynasty Warriors seven and eight. Either I think they also had like a, I think it was a campaign for like Shu Wu and Away which were the three war warring kingdoms. And so you'd play through the entire story of those from front to back. And as certain characters dropped in and out of that story, they be they became available and unavailable in the roster as people mm -hmm. you could play. So it became about the overall group instead of the individual. And then I think if you beat them all, you unlock the Jin campaign, which is that how that all ends ultimately. Mm -hmm. uh, and so like they, they, so they, they have different takes on it. So like Overwatch could have character specific campaigns, but, you can't really right because it's four player or six I was, player. I guess it might be six player, huh? I don't know if there'll be four no, or six all player the, in the uh, campaign. All the PVE stuff is four player. Ah, well, it'd be easier to hmm. fill out, I guess. Uh, so, it'll be, so, no, so thinking... if it's four player, you can't have character specific campaigns because it'd be anyone. But you, but you can have like a Black Watch campaign and an Overwatch campaign and an Omnic campaign, for example. If you, but you just have to have the yeah. characters to support those rosters and then you just pick people from that list because the existing just three pick, just story pick missions in... like Sorry. there's three there's three story missions in overwatch so mm -hmm. far and in those ones there's two modes there's the canon mode it's not called that but the story mode version there that shows you a cutscene that sets up the mission and those four characters in the cutscene are the four characters you have to pick so you could kind of fight over them like the four characters in left for dead and that's all you get. So somebody has to play Mercy and etc. Uh, <laughs> but then, you, but then you play the the what the fuck around mode where it's just a re you can do various remixes of that mission and the entire roster is available. But there's just no story context for it anymore. Mm -hmm. But it, it kind of works in that way. Like they can do it that way in the overall thing if they want to. The way they're talking about doing it is that you can pick a surprising variety of characters and they have a bunch of unique interactions and conversations that happen between the characters at random in addition to the main plot point ones that are happening for the story purposes so in, in that way it is kind of like uh the conversations between characters in bioware games or left for dead where they start having mm -hmm. these these conversations back and forth and it's just kind of luck based when when they'll show up and they might even progress linearly in some way but there's like custom cutscenes that don't aren't completely set in stone because you might pick different characters entirely. But I imagine just to make the story make sense, there has to be a context. Like you can't do like Genji and Widowmaker working together unless the story goes there because they are not friends. Yeah, I was thinking yeah, that, just uh, purely. I was thinking purely along the lines of of a traditional shooter storyline. So I wasn't I wasn't even thinking of anything like Dynasty Warriors, but yeah, I mean that's the thing though is like there's an expectation for you know it's an FPS so it must have an FPS style story, and that's not necessarily that's not a rule. You don't yeah. have to follow yeah. that, um, and I think that's like that's one of the big reasons that Call of Duty is such a I think, I think there also are story. FPSs that have factions with separate campaigns. Uh, sometimes you can, you can course, definitely yeah. you can definitely uh, do it yeah uh, oh yeah medal of was that medal of honor the one with the the lady oh, yeah. people the, are mad medal at of honor usually that one has that one has multiple. separate campaigns in it yeah. yeah 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 there's there's ways to do it it's just 
shooter campaigns obviously usually get the short end of stick because that's not the thing you invest the money in. You invest the money into the, uh, the multiplayer, the thing that makes people play it for like 20 years. Um, but you so, only do you know, that if it's monetizable. The 20 years. If that's they're... not true. Well, it's actually not true. Modern, uh, Modern Warfare 4 would have co- kept going forever if not for a new game coming out. Like, well, that's how they monetized it. <laughs> they, no, they but I'm, I'm saying games. that like, I'm saying that like the it didn't need like DLC or anything to keep. Well, it needed DLC maps. It needed new maps to keep going. But like, if you make mm-hmm. a game, you know, like, and Overwatch is a good testament to this. If you keep oh, adding sure, new content sure. to a game, but there's not a necessity to, to make a new game. But like, you also need you need to see that the uh, uh, it's not Obsidian. What's the name of the company? Blizzard, sorry. Blizzard has an, a vested interest in making sure that a lot of people continually play Overwatch because they gain money from people playing Overwatch through the loot box system. So Sure, but that's it, not like... The, again, that's not the... Uh, that's not the thing that keeps people coming back. People don't come back to Overwatch because they want to open a loot box. They come back to Overwatch because they want to play the new content, play different characters, play... like. There's so much you can you can play Overwatch and you can play 40 hours just with one character and then play a whole nother character for another 40 hours. Like that's kind yeah. of the appeal. But also the other appeal is that there, you know, that's why the event stuff happens. That's why there's so many different modes. That's why there's like the whole arcade exists. That's why there's custom game modes. That's why like they keep adding new stuff because the more uh, a campaign isn't a requirement. It's nice, but you can you can supplement it by just having a bunch of other things to do in the game. Uh, Overwatch obviously wants to come up with a, a single player aspect because you, you need something. Like there, but you it's need not something player, to. Though, it's co-op. <laughs> no, but you can play it. I, I oh, believe oh. I'm pretty sure you can play the. I don't know if you can uh, play with bots or not, but really, the single player is just a, a misnomer that people often apply to, to the having a yeah a PVE campaign yeah. in something. Yeah, but I mean, let's uh, go play the know. single player together. <laughs> That's is it a <laughs> sentence people will uh, say unironically? Playing, oh, no. I mean, playing the uh, playing non PvP combat or content in a in a shooter game, in a specifically a PvP shooter game is uh you know that's a that's nice. Uh, it's nice having that extra that alternative content, especially for people who just don't enjoy the PvP aspect. Um, I mean, I don't know. It's the the the. The really dumb throwaway line is like, I have friends who like Overwatch, but they don't like to play, to compete in Overwatch. I'm like, well, then maybe they should play like Portal because it's non it's a non competitive or like Left 4 Dead is a non competitive first person shooter. Um, but yeah, their idea is that they, you know, obviously the you want to try to make a game that requires the like the 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 PVE environment stuff is probably a lot easier to make than the pvp stuff because with pvp stuff you have to balance a lot of shit around all of these characters and that's probably there's probably <clears> some <throat> like there's a department that there's like a subset of people who are the balancers and they probably have this shitty spreadsheet and anytime they b- bump a number a whole bunch of other numbers change and they have to look and go oh fuck that's going to completely just destroy somebody else and like it's probably excruciating, but in a PvP environment, oh, who cares? You just get to have a I, wacky, fun adventure, and now May yeah. turns into a wrecking ball. We, yeah. The only <laughs> thing that matters is if the content is interesting. It doesn't matter if like, oh, May's too strong or Reinhardt's too strong. Like that doesn't mean anything in the context of PVE. All that matters is that the experience itself is enough fun and challenge to keep people wanting to play it more. Like that's it. I don't. I. I'm gonna be honest with you. It's gonna I mean, suck. Like the yeah. Overwatch PVE stuff is going to be absolute shit and not worth the time to That's wait. That's my for concern. It. Uh, it's going to be bad my, because, my, because the the PVE content in the game right now is so awful. But it's also <laughs> like it, it it's also like clearly never the priority. Like it's like here's some generic yeah. omnics that just walk at you and shoot and you shoot their head and they just walk on paths then there's the orissa mod, mod, there's the orissa version and there's the bastion version and those guys do weirder things and then there's little there's a little there's the little fucking mousers from teenage mutant ninja turtles that come after you and stuff like there's a couple of variations yeah. but none of them are very interesting but they're all more interesting than the, than the standard enemy at least but uh like the big concern yeah is like can they make enemies that do a bunch of crazy stuff and make the game in any way like 
even vaguely as dynamic as the multiplayer is because the problem is like the whole point of overwatch is that you have this entire cast of completely unique characters that have almost no overlap in how they behave compared to each other in many cases and then you have this insane multiplayer game that has this crazy amount of depth not just because each character has a decent amount of depth to them and you can spend so many hours learning how to play them better but also because it, they're part of what's so hard about all those characters is how they interact with all those other characters and like so the the dynamic of the game is so fucking crazy in a way that like no other game really exists to fully capture like mm-hmm. even if you even if you take it a, a tf2 as a base level thing like tf2 just doesn't have 30 plus classes <laughs> like so like even so even if you compare it to tf2 it's like it's a at this point it's a completely different thing just on the sheer level of weird variety and in, in the in level of strangeness like here's characters that have physics based attacks with knockback and here's crowd control people and here's shield people and here's hit scan versus like bouncy grenade versus all these different interactions it's such a weird weird game and that gets like, like it's really highlighted whenever i play like, like obviously support. Like, playing as Mercy, it's like you're playing a different game than everyone else because in many cases you're not even engaging with the combat directly. Then you play as Symmetra, and it's like, I put turrets down and I put teleporters down, and I have a giant <laughs> infinite shield wall as my ult, and these are, these are just fundamentally different interactions than the rest of the cast has. And, like, and the fact that the game's just, like, 30-plus characters of that or whatever is just fucking ridiculous. Uh... So to take all those characters and be like, yeah, now go into this Left 4 Dead map and fight just a bunch of mobs. Like, go all of you, like, when you, like I, always, I always remember playing King's Row, because we, we probably played that one the most, and it's just not very interesting, despite being my favorite Overwatch map. Uh, you walk into a garage and defend it while a meter goes up. Then you go over to, like a, like, a cart, like the payload, and you ride it through town, I think, to defend it. And it's like... Yeah. It's just wave upon wave of the same two or three enemies coming at you, and you just kind of keep shooting them. And in many cases, the characters fundamentally don't feel designed for that kind of experience. Like I would, when I played someone like, like when you play as May, you're like, I mean, we really prioritize just putting out damage in every direction at once. Like a Torbjorn can do that, but like May is like, what, what am I for? Or like Ash, Ash is a character designed around team fights. Like, she has X number of shots to fire, and then she has to sit there and reload for, like, 30 seconds, it feels like, if she <laughs> if she's completely empty. If the level is just endless robots coming at you from multiple directions at once all the time, and you can only do single target shots at most of them all the time, and then you have to reload for an eternity each time, like, that, that ebb and flow just makes that character feel like trash for that entire game type, which is the only type of campaign mode they have, is those three maps that play really relatively similarly that's why it was encouraging to see the the blizzcon stuff about overwatch where they kept showing like look at all our crazy enemy types we're gonna add because that's what the game desperately needed is if they're gonna have a campaign it has to have really dynamic and weird enemy types and they have to behave interestingly and dynamically and challengingly because if you just make us fight lines of dudes that keep walking at us then like it's really monotonous and not very interesting I think something that they didn't change in the uh, PVE quests in in uh, Overwatch is something that it could change in PV uh, in uh, Overwatch Two is th- how Overwatch One is mostly around uh, centered around the cooldowns, whereas traditional shooters are mostly centered around ammo capacity. And sure, there's some cooldowns here and there with certain attacks in normal shooters, but it's usually about the ammo. And because Overwatch is just sort of throws that out the window. Uh, actually, there is no ammo at all in in, in Overwatch. So yeah, it's, unless yeah, you except for the part where you like shoot a gun and reload it. But yeah, there's no you don't run out of ammo overall. Yeah, yeah. There's no pickups. But in a single yeah. player game, usually ammo is very important. Conserving ammo is using the sort of grenades that when you need yeah. to use them. So there's it's always like that a, question of like, oh, I got the rocket launcher, but like, do I just fire it now or do I hold on to it because I'm, I'm probably not going to get more. <laughs> yeah. Do you think do you think that needs to be changed to make it interesting? No, in, no? no, don't don't do that. Uh, if you if you do that, you basically turn into like Valorant, which is just a shitty version of Overwatch. Like, there's uh, the problem with ammo but is that I it think you might mean for the PVE part too. Yes, uh, exclusively oh, for, for the PVE. I don't think ammo would in any way help the no, PVE. No, that would, no, that would ruin I, the game. <laughs> it's basically. I don't. I don't know yeah. what 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 what's really the point. Uh, <laughs> your Reinhardt hammer breaks and you have to go get another one around the yeah, corner. Like, what the, so here's the thing. Not only is there a lot of characters that this becomes really convoluted for, 
Like, mm-hmm. for example, does Lucio have ammo? <laughs> yeah, good point. Good point. I mean, they what could is, come up with something. What is that? What is that? He reloads mean? something. <laughs> That's what I mean, though. Like, you don't, don't think about is. that. You don't think of he he reloads batteries. He throws batteries into his thing, and that's but, his reloading yeah. animation. But like, not even... how many fucking batteries is this guy going through? Is he literally just throwing batteries on the fucking <laughs> ground? Like, do you but, have to go? Where do you you have to go to every electronics store and just buy out the battery section? But, I, but the real question is, what happens when Symmetra picks up Lucio's gun? <laughs> I, well, she, technically, it's she infinite gets ammo because she because <laughs> it's well, the she worst can, gun. So, she can generate. Well, she generates uh, objects from light, so technically she could just generate the batteries from light and power the gun <laughs> that way. What it's- I'm saying is, like, traditional shooters are obviously very, very different. Like, from a design perspective, it's not even about just writing a story or le- designing levels. It's just the fundamental mechanics of the game are so different from what Overwatch is. And I think that's a good thing in regards to Overwatch, is that they were able to look at the basic shooter mechanics and saying, okay, so this whole thing about having different weapons for this for the same character, forget that. None, nothing. So this whole thing about have, having ammo, no. Cooldowns, that's what we're here for. And that's why Overwatch is maybe a little bit more of a MOBA than it is a than it is a shooter competitive arena thing. But it, it's also obviously a shooter. But I think they need to take a step back if they're going to make that PvE. Because otherwise it's just... like that, Keith That's was the, just the, the about, biggest, scariest thing about the PvE is the fact that the content for the like the the main game is being strangled right now to make the pve Mm. because like and like the sequel has value in that like you have a diminishing player base at some point so you want to like invigorate it and be like wow new release because if you you put out an overwatch 2 and it's basically just overwatch 1 but relaunching and so on then you'd be like oh Mm. man look at all these new people we're going to bring in because it's a new game and that's what sequels do and it's like there's a value there but insisting on holding back the content any more content having happening for the current game uh at this point for years uh is an incredibly brutal way to like save up the resources to make the sequel especially when you find out that like it's not just like at first it was like okay they're gonna make an overwatch 2 they're gonna slow down on making characters for a bit and at the time it felt like okay that means that we're that uh this year we just get echo and then next year we have Overwatch 2, so it'll be worth it, right? And Overwatch 2 will probably have like eight new characters, who knows? And like six new maps and a new mode and stuff like that. Like that seemed like the trade-off we were going to be getting and it'd be totally worth it. But then the, the heavily believed release date, like surely if they're kind of cutting all off content that it must be coming out next year, right? Became, no, it's coming out next, next year. And they're still not saying anything about releasing more content for the original game. And you know that they're putting so much of their resources into making this PvE mode that might just be trash despite all the waiting. It gets also, a lot harder Blizzard. to be optimistic about it. Also, it's Blizzard. They might just trash it all and just say, we are not doing it after all. After oh, that would be a nightmare. They, they do that so often, though. They no, did that with, I, the, with a over Overwatch Two is going to be finished. I, I don't I don't have a doubt that they're actually at this point the guns to their head a little bit. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, they also, yeah, they Blizzard does have a gun to their head really hard. Uh, <laughs> you could tell by the fact that, like, during the, the Blizzard, BlizzCon thing, they clearly were like, look, you fucking got to show something to these fucking people or we're going to yeah, be screwed. There was, there was some like, desperation hey, to it. They were trying you're to play allowed off. To, yeah, they're like, they're basically in a Zoom call, like, Hey, anybody want to talk about things they're excited for in a game that may come out soon? Look at these beautiful maps, which is much yeah, easier people, to show because like, they they were terrified. Like they 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 almost showed us Sojourn. <laughs> like yeah, they, we, almost showed they us still her. haven't showed us Sojourn, and that's the only new character shown in any of the stuff. This is one yeah. new character, and we don't know what she does. <laughs> is that the Canadian tank style thing? No, that's uh, the. She looks like just like a soldier, or no, she's oh. the one with the light. She has a rail. She gun. has a rail, gun, a rail gun, but it looks like a machine gun sometimes, so it's confusing and not very well explained. And I think she has mechanical legs. Mm. Yeah. And uh, and so like, she shows up in a couple cutscenes, and I think I don't even know if she spoke in them. But yeah, uh, she speaks in them. And but like she, we don't know what her buttons do. We don't know what kind of character yeah. she plays like. She just runs she runs around on the ground and she shoots a gun, but it's a glowy gun. But I'm like, ultimately, yeah, it's like, is this just another character like Soldier that runs around and shoots a gun? Like a, it's not like it's not like they're hinting at like 
wrecking ball. <laughs> like we're like, what is this status quo change? What does that even mean? He it's, he's yeah. a wrecking ball. He like swings around on a chain and slams into people. What's the game gonna be like in 2022? Crazy! I can't even imagine. It's like oh, it's a lady who runs around with a gun. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah. The, yeah. That, the, yeah, that does, it's, yeah. 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 <laughs> it's and the. I don't know. At and the like, end of the day, my like, <laughs> like the way the demo plays, it feels like you're watching Mercy shoot her gun, and that's the preview of the character. Like she must do stuff, right? But they didn't show any of the things. <laughs> that was yeah, the, all had, they had for us. What was weird is that she had buttons too. Like they showed the HUD with her buttons, and they pressed there, none of them. They, but they pressed none <laughs> of them, which is like, I, I mean, I get it. It's again, the game's coming out next year. They're probably going to change her entire kit four times uh since that video was recorded last year like i i don't have a doubt that you know she's not going to be the same character yeah like balancing is hard so they kept showing stuff like like they showed soldiers like bumper car mode where his his heel field would follow him around and would have a knockback on enemies that entered it and but that's only like, for pve hmm. stuff and, yeah, yeah but they're also like yeah we already got rid of that that was bullshit <laughs> that was that was that was too powerful it's so like they, they can't even be sure that anything they're showing us now will exist in the game like like, and, like, like Reinhardt having two fire strikes. Yeah, <laughs> and that's the thing is like yeah, there's there nice. there are parts I like I get it I get that Overwatch is, you know, it's a game that I really want a sequel to, but I get that it's a game that you can't just like rush this shit because it will suck, like it will suck hard. And the but the only downside is I know that no matter how much time you take, you're never gonna make the PVE campaign good. And it's always going to frustrate <laughs> me that I'm I'm going to suffer uh, what amount what will amount to just like a very dry game yeah. for the next year, just so that this like suboptimal PVE experience can come out and I can go cool, but no thanks. I just want to play more PV, PvP. You stuff. and many other people as well. That's the thing. But You're like, not alone in but, that. And, yeah. and like again, I get the necessity for it, but like again, if if I'm being honest with you, the the idea of a skill tree implies one thing to me. You're going to have to play this shit over and over again. And that doesn't mean it's going to be good. Like you, unless your skills, unless you're going to be leveling up these like character trees, basically all the way to max every single map, or they're going to have like 500 maps. Yeah. I, I, I definitely do... get the feeling it's going to take a while yeah. to level each character and it's going to be like a commitment. And, and there's so and many the characters is, that I'm like, Ugh. yeah, there's, there's so many characters. There's no guarantee that all of these characters are going to have good upgrade, like worthwhile upgrades compared to their normal stats. Do their like PVE stats come into play with the PVE or PVP? There stuff? There better be like a or, free sorry, respec no, there... or something because I'm definitely concerned about like, like, grinding yeah, sure for hours for like on a character you like then you're hitting this that promising looking ability then you use it and you're like oh mm -hmm. all right i want to get on the other tree can i can i, can I reset but not start over <laughs> importantly yeah, not start over can i just move I, my points I would, have, I would imagine no i you know like why why would you do that it's better it it sounds like if i'm because instead you could put that as a currency item in the battle pack <laughs> like look i've seen this before exactly. i've seen this so many times before, especially Payday 2 is the best example of this. Payday 2 is a game that has a metric fuck ton of maps and it has a skill tree and there's like a fuck ton of skill trees. There's skill trees for like 17 different classes, basically. And I you hate can, that that game has a skill tree. And you could do like so <laughs> many different runs and so many different builds. And you know what the thing that like at the end of the day, the way that I walk away from that game is. I just want to fucking kill people. Jesus Christ. I don't. Why is this so fucking hard? I just want to fucking kill people. Like, I don't I don't know why I have to have like this stupid fucking drill spec so that my drill doesn't break every 30 fucking seconds while I'm doing something. And I need to also be able to have the armor to fucking kill a guy wearing yeah. like a truck on his body. Like, come the fuck on, man. I don't want to. And it's like, oh, well, your teammates do that. I. I also want to do that. I also want to play the game. Why do I just, why can't I just I hate that as a skill tree because it's a game about it's a co-op game about doing a heist. 
So like I I just want it to be a skill based thing of uh, all let's yeah. all work together to do this thing, not like exactly. Oh, but I gotta play this incomplete version of the game for twenty hours until I finally unlock the version of the game that has the mechanics that make the game feel full later. But then it's also like oh, these mechanics make the game easier. So the be- the more time you are and the better you are, the game also just gets easier for you by giving you more easy th- like things to help you do your job. And it's like just give just give me the fucking buttons. Just let me use them. It's up there with like, like I hate. I also hate that in paladins. It's stupid. It's so stupid that you level your heroes in paladins, so you just don't have. You're just not fully featured at the beginning. So you're entering yeah. matchmaking with an incomplete character, and you and you like you fighting. It's not like your enemies are incomplete. Like they have every skill tree and every card and every fucking thing they can do with their character, and your character is literally less good. You just straight up have entire builds and styles that you could be doing with your character that are entire gameplay mechanics that you just can't play until you play as that character for like 10 hours or some shit. And it's like, the moment that's actively bad. The moment uh, Call of Duty introduced that in their um, online multiplayer game, I think it was after 4? Four? 4 added that, yeah. 4 added I, I was, okay, it was, I, that was back itself. when I was still playing Call of yeah. Duty games. I played 2, 3, mo- and 4, and 4 had a progression system that unlocked weapons and stuff. I'm like, excuse me? Yeah, it's like the moment they put that in, I, I knew that I, I that wasn't a franchise for me. And ever since then, games that have that, I'm just like, yeah, this is just like yeah. I'm playing every once in a while. I play De- Dead uh, by Daylight with Bumpy McSqueakums and some other uh, streamers. And, um, and it's, yeah, it's got progression and, and unlocks it, it and skill trees. And it's like, just make the game, just play the game. The only way that <laughs> the game I should be static though, is that if you have like a custom map and with friends, you don't play like open public open games you just played with friends but yeah never play public games because people things. just fucking quit and the match is useless <laughs> well actually well i'm not uh, that's the game's a little bit different but the thing is they have like all these overpowered abilities in in online in in public games and i don't because i i don't i didn't pay for the microtransactions really that's that's how you get them i hate it i hate it so I, much i just want to go back to like halo two days where you paid 15 dollars for a couple of maps and then in like six months, the maps are free because they they released a new DLC pack. And what a what a cool system that we never got back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, including like what the fuck in happened? including in Halo, I think. Like no, Halo never did that again either. Yeah, it was just like a wow, this is amazing, Bungie. Could we do this forever? And the industry went no. Yeah, we'll it was a, it was again. it was Halo Two. Every three months after release, a map pack that was like three maps came out. And yeah. every time that that the a new one came out, the previous one became free forever. Yep. <laughs> and was yeah. then added. Nice. And they had a and then and they had yeah. a they had two sets of matchmaking. They had the like base level matchmaking and the premium matchmaking. And it was the the premium matchmaking was just you know the maps, but plus the DLC that currently costs money. And so the moment they made the previous maps free, they could then get filtered into the everybody matchmaking. So that and then and grow that that uh that content base for the for just on a base level so it was a staggered thing kind of like how like when mmos come out only the newest expansion costs money yeah oh is that how it works yes pretty commonly only the like because they quickly realized they can't keep going that way with like world of warcraft and stuff like that like you can't i thought you had to buy all the things yeah especially since so many of these are things are bought like discs like they're bought like as a disc at best buy and stuff like that like a lot of people buy games that way still uh, mm-hmm. You can't, you can't just keep making Best Buy stock every previous expansion. Like I worked at Best Buy when Lich King came out, came out, which is when I, I I quit WoW right before that, and so we had World of Warcraft and and Burning Crusade and Lich King, and you had to buy all three of them in order to play uh, Lich King, and that's just those were the first few. That was the I first two expansions three. were okay. Burning Crusade and Lich King. And then you mm-hmm. had uh, Cataclysm and and Pandaria and Draenor and Legion and Battle for Azeroth and now Shadowlands. Shadowlands. You can't have people go to Best Buy and buy eight discs in order to be able to play <laughs> your game. No one will buy them, for, first of all. That's absurd. Yeah. And also, like, freaking pretty fucking ballsy to, like, demand Best Buy has, like, a Sims-style dedicated section just for star- uh, stocking all the different variations of World of Warcraft so people can buy them all in a linear fashion. Like, nobody is <laughs> yeah. the Sims. You can't get away with that. Uh, and also, and- the Sims doesn't quite work like that. It's You can just mix and match. Yeah, but no, yeah, they weren't linear. But yeah, but, like, I worked when I worked at we had a whole Sims shelf. 
that was like yeah, yeah top to bottom and it was just the same green box with different things on the cover that had different like this is the one with pets and stuff like that uh, it is, yeah it's it's just comedic to look at and it, like i don't know i i don't know what the financial situation was there for bungie i don't know if like that if it worked or not for, yeah i don't know if that model was like a terrible they were, design they were essentially choice, but, pioneering console dlc but like, yeah, it was but like, like they were the a, first ones practically to do it as a consumer i thought i was getting my money's worth i didn't yeah. feel like i was getting screwed yeah like, i paid, I paid for like, every single one of them and it seemed fine yeah and like i i thought i think the nicest part was that it went free so like i had friends who you know who couldn't afford to buy them and i was like okay well like you know i'm gonna play i'll play the dlc stuff alone and we can play the regular stuff together and then you know in like three months when the new dlc comes out i'll buy that and then we can play we can still play those new maps together and it's like it seemed like a really good balance and then you you get to later you know like then it became a oh but we could just keep charging like people will still buy mm -hmm. it we just never stop charging for it and again it's you know much like loot boxes no one really like well the consumers as a whole didn't stand up and go like yeah no we're not gonna fucking do that and so they just keep no they know, actually just, did the opposite they bought them like yeah, crazy they, they just bought them like crazy which is weird because it's there's yeah, like this weird, to be like that but there's it's a dis, weird. there's a inset, no yeah no it's very weird it's very oh, very they, weird they do it on like, purpose though they no, he's saying it. it's weird he's he's saying the audience it's weird that the audience yeah, was like it's, they I'm embraced it that, yeah i'm saying that's weird that people consumers embrace this terrible design like we we had a better choice we actually literally had a much better system and yeah, everyone no. decided people are, people are easy to manipulate no. on market levels it's yeah it's frustrating yeah. and I, it sucks because now i'm in the and, position and like where oh wait, like i've shown I, with my fucking like my growing loot box stack that people take weird issue with people get <laughs> people get bought they'll defend the system they'll get mad at you for not engaging with the system because it's like when somebody says they're vegan like this it's like a they, they it's they, they they take it as a judgment that somebody else doesn't do the thing that they do because they're what you think you're better than me <laughs> yes well yeah, yeah, that, that's it. I am better than you. I don't have to play. I don't have to do this stupid thing. Like I, I don't have to buy uh, battle passes every month to play fucking. Look video forward games. to a battle pass in Overwatch. Uh, I think there's I mean, a certain... and, if the, and if you put a battle pass in, I won't fucking buy it because I don't need it. And nothing. There's nothing Overwatch can offer me that I would go like, oh fuck, better get a battle pass. Like, what? What are you gonna do? Skins? Don't give a fuck like maps if you put maps behind a battle pass and i'm just not gonna play your fucking game like i i don't have, or a character that is the, that is the concern it. yeah like, like I, I i just desperately hope that when they add a battle pass to overwatch it'll still be on the same ethical level as the current one where it's just like there's just the occasional reminder the loot boxes are around and don't you want them but like i clearly can play the game just fine without them and also, you get like I think Overwatch. They have every I map and think, every character. I don't think it's good that they have uh, loot boxes because they are literally charging you money if you pay for them. They're, they're literally charging you money to get random stuff, and that's bad. Yep, it's gambling. But you get There's, you get so it's many never of them be for okay. free. It's so paid it doesn't gambling in a game that has a bunch of kids in it. Which I mean, look at look at which is a look at, distressing look at, legal gray area. Well, what I'm saying I mean, is, eh. I, I what I what I said was just a preface. I like. I don't think it's okay that they charge money for random stuff. That's bollocks, and, and they shouldn't be allowed to do that even in the first place. But I think Overwatch is a game that if... I, don't, I obviously don't have an addictive personality, and so I don't have a personal problem with that. But I think it's probably the least, the least offensive of all the games that I played with loot boxes. Apart from Half Dead 2. That one was I don't a, really have much of an issue with loot boxes uh, existing as a concept. Uh, I well, just, but the thing is... I, I just have Sorry. a problem that people uh, find them to be, like, necessary. I, I well, have a the problem thing... that like, that people need to have loot boxes where it's like, that That seems like a, you know, again, I I, I understand the, the, like, no, it shouldn't be okay that a company is taking advantage of people's uh, instincts to gamble to yeah, that's the problem. sell a product. But at the end of the day, like, I, I honestly, I'm kind of in the opinion that, like, that's a that's a you problem, dude. Like you, you nah, need to deal with. Not, yeah, I was like, that's something same. you need to. So everything is addictive. Look, if, like 
Every, you know, no, like, not not everything is addictive. People have so different do people spend their lives like playing the fucking casino games in Pokemon? Like, do they get fucking sit there and they're in the stupid Pokes or Poke, whatever it's called, Poke Casino, and they're just rolling the slot machines trying to get the fucking Porygon? Like, is that yeah. is is that dangerous to people? Because if so, is, then like is, maybe you is th- the is the company getting money from them? Because that's the problem. Like, if you're getting if you're getting money from people's it's not even about getting money from that. It's they, they purposely target the people who have addictive personalities. Who how are compulsive. though? I guess that's what By, I'm losing. Like, how are they targeting them? Because there, there's nothing. The loot it's whenever, boxes it's don't when you monetize, game. It's when you monetize the addiction mechanic. But but yeah. there's nothing in the and there's nothing in the loot box Look, system that changes want, the way the I mean, game we, plays. We know that a Skinner's box is manipulative. Yeah, yeah. But, but I, it works I guess on the people, argument I'm having and that's what is a loot that, box like, is, just like a slot machine like, is. A, a loot it's box, randomized I, rewards like what's gonna happen and that that taps yeah. into a fucking part of your brain that but, manipulates you into doing it over and over again and the, and the important thing is to know that some people that it's not the same for everybody like we're literally not playing the same game you and me you uh, you and me and other people when we go into a game that have that has loot boxes and i don't feel any need to even give a, a damn about that but other people will be like, oh, I wonder what it's, what it's like. And, and I have money to spend. I'll, I'll spend it. And other people are like, I don't have the money to spend it. But I really want to know what it's like. That's, you know, we don't make the choice to be like that, to th- feel those things. So we're literally not playing the same game, even though it is the same game. We just, we don't, we don't feel the same things when we play the game. And the thing is, uh, Blizzard makes their game knowing full well that a lot of players are like me and like you, Andrew. I, I guess you never played for, paid for any loot box, I assume. No. Yeah, so uh, Blizzard, Why? They, they, for... they give you, they give like hundreds of them that's, to you for free yeah, that's so what I'm easily. This game like, is no not need. as atrocious as it could be. And there's yeah, like, if, many of the games. If you're paying are. for loot boxes in Overwatch, like what the fuck's wrong with you, dude? Just but, play the fucking game. You'll get the you'll get the skin. Yeah, I have every skin. It's and also I've the never entire basis of like Diablo 3, like, where like it, you just sit there clicking on fucking goblins for t- 20 hours and what can barely be constituted as gameplay. But you're just waiting for that <laughs> vertical golden beam of oh my god a legendary drop and then like that's what you're going for is the randomized interval rewards that you, when you don't know they're going to happen so you just keep going and going like that's the design yeah. philosophy of that entire idea yeah, yeah absolutely and like i'm a sort of person that but if you monetize it you're unethical <laughs> i that's yeah. why i guess i'm confused by is like i if you're not i i don't like the idea of hiding uh like specifically important things behind a loot box um you should like, if you, like if you, they're selling a skin they should allow people to pay for that skin it doesn't matter how much it costs even though i think i still think that skins are way too expensive even as they are but it doesn't matter how much it's not about the money no. it's about them hiding them because they I've, hide I've, them i have always been right? mad ever sent well he means that you can't just get the skin you have to engage yeah, yeah. with the gambling system to get it yeah but uh they, they do that on purpose yeah they make it because the only they way. know they're gonna sell yeah. more and and the people who they sell more to are the people who are the most vulnerable yeah even it's if you, the, they, they know that even if you overcharge for the skin you literally still make more profit by by making people gamble for it instead of buying it for too high of a price exactly. but no and that, that's what frustrated me is that like you have all these fucking people that will meme on games on Twitter and like mock them, be like, "Oh my God, look at the total price of this game! What do they think they're doing about like a game full of like trains or whatever, or like Dead or Alive six or five or whatever the most six I think is the one." And and like there's they they get mad that Dead or Alive six has a quote unquote total price of like four hundred dollars or something, and it's like, well, no, see the game's free to play, and you can get every single character playable for like $20 in one bundle, and that's all of the content of gameplay. There you go, that's every character. Like, the game's $20. It just has a massive store of costumes that you can buy for $2 each or in a variety of bundles. So one, the costumes are only like $2, but they're also in a series of bundles where it's like, here's the swimsuit for every girl in one bundle, and it's like, that's $20 or whatever, and then like, and because of how Steam counts DLC, every single bundle is also stacked with the prices of all the individual purchases, even if the bundles are also bundles of other bundles. Like, sometimes the bundles are like, here's the super bundle, that's those four other bundles, but at a discount. And, like, that counts again towards the total price. So, one, the, the total price people are, like, making fun of is true for no one. Like, it's only true <laughs> if you stupidly buy, pl- click the buy all button at the bottom of Steam that's auto-generated without even looking at what you're buying, which would be insane, because it's not even... You'd be buying the same content four times in some cases. 
But also it's like Dead or Alive did it the ethical way. There's no battle pass. There's no loot boxes. It's just, hey, you want the one where like Hayabusa's a dragon ninja? It's two dollars. Just buy it a la carte. You could buy the four costumes you like the most and be like, I'm, I'm out eight dollars. I got the costumes I wanted and that's it. But no, the people I, like that have just fucking just choking on loot boxes and and uh, and battle passes and every other competitive game. They poo poo at the fact that Dead or Alive sells two dollar costumes in like this quaint retro like ethical way. And it's like, yeah, it's a little sad that back in the day. In Dead or Alive 4, I could unlock eight Hitomi costumes by just beating the campaign as her over and over again, and I did. I beat the campaign. You'd get one new costume every time you beat the game as a character, and some of them only had three, but Hitomi had eight, was the highest, and there were there were variability from character to character based on how many they made. So ultimately, you get like 50 costumes probably. So it's like, yes, it's sad that you can't just unlock costumes by playing the game, just like how cheat codes became de- like microtransactions at one point. But on the other hand... Dead or Alive Six has like hundreds of costumes, so if you're if you if you see more costumes, it's a good thing. And you don't like loot boxes and battle passes, like that's your example. And making fun of it or complaining about it is just endorsing loot boxes, basically, and being like, no, I prefer the one that manipulates me instead of being honest and just selling me them. But it's like, yeah, because what one of the other things that loot boxes do is they obfuscate the price. Because like you don't you don't know how common it is you don't know what how much it'll take to get and the game will certainly never track how much you're putting money into it so you'll never really have a, a memory of like oh yeah. like how uh, did I buy loot boxes in January like did I buy them again in July like what is your total you investment out. in loot boxes uh, over the course of the last four years the only way you'll you know is checking on, your bank statements yeah no you can like go the on game Battle.net. Battle.net tells you how much. Uh, tells, yeah, tells but it's not like there it's not it's not but, there the way that like a store shows you. But well, it's not like, just if, about like if you buy the, the map price. packs for a shooter, you're like, I know exactly how much money I spent because I bought all these map packs and they all say purchase next to them and they have this price next to them, which is but itself it's not- speaking of manipulative practices. That's also what fucking uh, Microsoft did is that they obfuscated the prices of things by making you buy fake currency in order to buy their DLC for stuff, <laughs> which on yeah. one hand meant that you could only buy it in specific intervals, which meant that you could. Uh, you couldn't buy the exact amount you needed to buy something, so you had to buy too much currency all the time. And you always had a weird floating amount. Two, it meant that you would see a number, and they could artificially make it look like a smaller number. Like, 1,200 Microsoft points is is $15. But it says 12, which sounds like less money. And also, they they further obfuscated the, the price by making it so that you could buy... If you bought really, really large amounts of Microsoft points, then you technically got a discount, which meant that a Microsoft point did not actually technically have a completely set value. And so these are all manipulative practices that get you to like not really think about how much money you're spending on a thing. Like This is like... That's gross in its own way, own way, but that's like the proto version of the idea of loot boxes of like you just be like you're, you're going to play this game for years. How many loot boxes have you bought? Who knows? And who knows how much more money you spent than you would have if you just if you just could have just bought that costume for two dollars instead of doing what you did there. And then the battle pass is the next layer because instead of randomized loot uh, that loot boxes have, instead of having that Skinner box sort of thing. What it does is FOMO mechanics, which is that you are, it's telling you on the screen, wow, you just unlocked this new Reinhardt skin. If only you had the battle pass. So it keeps telling you that you already have things over and over again that you don't actually have because you haven't, because this experience meter keeps going up. Like, wow, you're level 27 now. You could have chrome rims if you only bought the battle pass. Uh, and like, and then the, it keeps it's, building, and it keeps building up more and more. So you have you play it for months, and now you're like level ninety nine, and there's that entire backlog of all those things you've unlocked. So now it's really tempting to buy that battle pass right now, isn't it? Because you've been you've been putting it off for all these months. But look at how much stuff you've unlocked. Like, look at the value of that if you buy it now. And worst of all. Next week, the season ends. Battle Pass 2 is coming out. All of that's going to go away, and you'll never get it again. You better buy it before it goes away. It's fucking horrible. It's a fucking yeah. psychological and manipulative nightmare. I hate it. It's some, I didn't know we could come up with something worse than loot boxes. It's the, the fucking is, worst. It's been, it's been shown that if developers drop that sort of predatory monetization, they don't, like, they, they, they don't, it, it's not evident that they lose money like they're doing all of that stuff and they don't are, they're not it's not evident there's no evidence is that, what is does what that I mean, to mean say? though like do, i don't 
I'm going to be honest. I have no fucking idea how money works in game studios because much like Hollywood, it has to be a bunch of Tom fucking foolery. It's I like, think, how, I think does it has it, to do is with Assassin's how easy. Creed a, a profitable game? How much money do you invest into making it versus how much you money you make by selling it? And it's about like, convincing you, the investors. If you convince like, the investors that the game is profitable, and more importantly, in, in the case of microtransactions, that the game is going to be profitable, it's the same reason why they've had always that we've always seen games installed the Nuvo on their computer for anti-piracy measures and all that. It has all to do with the people who pay for publishing. It usually, it usually is publishers. It usually isn't the, the studios. And it's why you always see like the developers themselves be like, "We don't want any of this in our game." And then the developer, the publisher, comes in. Oh, yada yada. We're very sorry. You didn't listen. And then they maintain the, the Nuvo on their game. It's all about convincing the the stockholders and and people who invest in the game and just like. Yeah, I'm not really sure this game is going to sell. And the, and, the, and the publisher goes up and says, well, but we're going to put the Nuvo in it. Maybe we're going to put microtransactions. Maybe we're going to put a season pass or two. Pre-ordered season pass with discount. And the, and the, and the publishers g gain trust. It's always about, you need, always need to think about that, about all these big game decisions as w them trying to convince the people who gave them the money to make the game. Not Which again, convincing the people sound who pay for the game. Like... It doesn't sound like you've made a good game. Oh, for sure, for sure. For like, sure. it also doesn't... It, it Again, it comes back to consumers. Like, why the fuck are you people buying this shit? <laughs> like, what, what's wrong uh, with you? Like, I... Like, I... Again, like, Cyberpunk is an example where I bought it because it was... I knew it was a shit show and I wanted to experience it because I knew it wasn't going to be a shit show forever. Um, and I, you know, yeah. like, eventually... No, they'll, they'll eventually fix it. But it may take, like, two years. And... I, mm it's it's happening they've been working on it every like every couple of months they throw out some kind of patch to slowly build it to some stable state state compared to like what it is where like i summon a car and it drives under the ground towards me <laughs> like that's not going to be in the final okay i see like, what you mean you know like, <laughs> what you mean. there's going to be a, a, a point where cyberpunk isn't what the fuck cyberpunk was it, it'll stop being a, tra a travesty and it'll just be not good yeah, it'll just yeah. be a bland, okay, boring I see what game. You mean. It, it, yeah. Like it'll go from Assassin's Creed, it'll go from like, what the fuck is this circus show to Assassin's Creed level, and you're like, yeah. wow, all right. But like, why would you like? Why the fuck do you buy a AAA game if you know the expectation? The, you know the effort and energy is at its bare minimum, and the expectation of of you is way higher than the actual care that the publisher has to giving you a product you have expectations for, like. I've never met, I've never seen a AAA game that meets expectations, ever. There's never, it's never happened because people get more excited for a game than the publisher is even excited to make the fucking game. So like, <laughs> who, why do you do that? Why would you keep buying into this? And so it goes back into like loot boxes. Why do you, why would you invest money into this thing when it doesn't give a shit? It, it doesn't give a shit about you. So just don't like, you know, like again, buying like buying skins or whatever or dances I remember. doesn't mean anything because like it's not it's not that i can't play a game with my friends because i don't have this fucking dance or this skin like it, a map makes sense like if you have to buy a map yeah that locks you away from content but at the same time you're you, like, like i want that dance i don't give a fuck about <laughs> the dance the dance doesn't fucking mean anything because at the end of the day i'm not going to be dancing while i play the game i'm going to be fucking playing the game uh, and, like, dan if dances stuck, have value in, in mamopagers sure he plays but your, like they did that on purpose by the way fucking every final fantasy 14 race has a trash starting dance that also ends after 10 like five seconds and they're like oh you better yeah. you better work work your way through the handful of quests to give you a few of them and mm, maybe engage in our, our gambling area and then also you know buy the actually good dances at the store <laughs> which i mean yeah, at least it, at least they're purchases and not the other thing but it is a but that i, I have a I, I have a more troubling relationship with I'm more conflicted on the idea of charging for co bonus content in a game that has a monthly fee. That's what I'm like. Mm, you're already paying. You're already, you're already charging me per month. I don't know if you should be having a premium store on top of that. Wow. And Final Fantasy 14. I mean, it's, uh, you know, you got to make money as, mu as much as you can. $15 a month actually doesn't really amount to anything. That's a uh, tremendous amount of money. Like, I would no, uh, it, it's not that is so much it really, money. It really isn't. It, if you see how much in, it, the, in the world in the world before to, loot boxes, it the, was a huge amount of money for oh, one video that's game. 100 yes, but, that's one hundred and fifty dollars a year. 
That's cool. I can buy a console just, a year with that sort of money. But Old you're you're forgetting the fact money. that this fucking game runs on a goddamn cloud server. That shit's fucking expensive, man. I don't it's like care. 40, it's so like many, forty thousand dollars just to run a basic app a there's year. There's free games that there's free games that I. It doesn't matter if I enjoy it or not. But there's free games that they are free and also run on a cloud server. There are perpetually muddied waters, though. Like Final Fantasy XIV, for example, you can just play for free for the entire enti the entire base game and all of Heaven's Word, which we haven't even reached yet. <laughs> So like yeah. I could have literally been playing for free this entire not time and never put any money into the game, but I wanted to play as a Rothgar because <laughs> the yeah, Rothgar sure. are part of an expansion. They're an expansion but, race, so you don't have access like, to that I, expansion for in the free version. I'm not mm -hmm. justifying them having a premium store. That's that's shitty. I'm that's, saying, uh, uh, that's normal. I'm also just I'm also just behavior. commenting on how much money but, it is. Not but necessarily yeah. if it is. That, it really isn't. Like the you'd in be surprised about. In comparison to what you get, I understand your argument, but it but is like, a lot of it, money. The infrastructure costs way too much money for sure, like, to, for sure to run this shit like mmorpgs are kind of a fucking dumb idea that's why a lot they of people are. don't yes. make them that's why they it's all huge... failed yes yes because they're yes. huge fucking money to, remember like, money the fucking potholes. mid 2000s mmo gra graveyard tabula yeah, rasa so to make matrix it's, online <laughs> it's too fucking costly it's too expensive if like and that's why that's make. why Blizzard and Square Enix can afford to do it because they're fucking huge companies. They make a fuck ton of money. Like Square Enix makes plenty of fucking cash. They can afford to have a shitty cloud infrastructure in the back end for this weird MMO game. Blizzard can do the same thing. They're like, oh, WoW makes a ton of money. We can afford the cloud. They infrastructure have so much for this. spare money. Like, they can fucking fail at making one, take it down, spend another year making it more, and then put it yep. up again. <laughs> yeah, they, yeah. I mean, but like, yeah. But the average person, you know, like the average game company, like, does Ubisoft make enough money to make an MMO RPG? Probably not. Honestly, they uh... probably couldn't afford to do it. Like, uh, it's it's a that's a lot of money, and I doubt they're going to be able to get the capital to to do it. They can. There's no re there's only one reason you'd pump out that many fucking games that quickly that poor quality because you need some fucking cash and you're not making enough of it. Like there's no reason to keep making that many Assassin's Creed games the speed that they do it unless you're not making enough money. Like Square Enix will take a while between their games and you know that they also have like a lot of franchises going on in a single time, but they take a good amount of time between like Final Fantasy 10 and the next Final Fantasy isn't happening in 2 years. Like it's the, the the last time they did that was thirteen, and that was a shit show. That's why that's why they but, respond by by losing their shit and trying to make a multimedia franchise out of every new Final Fantasy. Like, and there's an anime, and there's a movie, yeah. and there's a phone game, and so on, because they're desperately trying to make as much money as they can from the property when it does happen. Yeah, but and like all that, of the but, side mm, stuff is worse somehow. Just, I there, there's a I don't know. There's like a weird. I, I think there's a weird expectation. Like. Games cost a lot of money to make. They cost a lot of money to maintain. They cost a lot of money to update, and they cost a lot of money uh, just to have to play. Like it but even costs a cost... consumer a lot of money to play the stupid fucking game. And like, it, it's it's a it's a money sink hobby for it's a money sink hobby, a money sink business, and it's a money sink everything. Everything is just a bad idea with gaming. Uh, but it's fun. And, like, you have to weigh that value. You have to say, like, is it worth investing all this money? Is it worth the the really shitty, all of this really shitty shit that goes involved with games just so we could maybe have an Undertale once? Like, you know, you have to, you have no, to kind of, like, or, like, is, is Stardew Undertale Valley worth the fact that this entire industry could, got, like, go into the sun worse. and no one would be sad about it? Like, It's worse it's, than that. It, Undertale it? happens despite the, the, all this crap that we're talking about. The, because what the, all this crap works for is that games like Undertale and indie games that are really well, Undertale is ne not necessarily very re revolutionary. It does it does have some new ideas and all that, but I think the um, only real benefit that a lot of the there's there's two benefits that the indie the indie scene has from AAA. One is just that AAA makes engines and things that end up being usable by by indie in some cases, and then there, and then there's the brain drain, which is just people fleeing AAA development and becoming indie developers. <laughs> yeah. But it's so difficult being an indie developer, though. Like, it's not... But they it, don't it, hate themselves. It's not, <laughs> well, the thing is, like, it, it's it's kind of... It's about the, how safe it is at, at the end of the day. Gaming, doing... I, I, obviously, I don't speak from experience, but 
uh, people who work in the gaming industry, like especially in, in terms of programmers, that they just you know they they work in games for a while and then okay I'm gonna program some washing machines or something instead because it's just so much more money and more stable and I don't need to crunch and I don't need to deal with ab abusive bosses who are abusive and pieces of crap in Activision and and yeah boring I Ubisoft. mean Ubisoft boring jobs are better jobs um, yeah but but the, the gaming industry also abuses that the fact that people like what, working and they're like oh you like working in games I'm just gonna pay you less I mean yeah. There's, it's, uh, I don't know. It's a, it's a really complicated a mess. family. Uh, there's multiple ways to solve for this. Obviously you can just, uh, you unionize for one. Well, and then unionize, you know unionizing kind of only works depending on where that game company's located at. And depending That's on also the, true, yeah. the rules that that country has regarding unions and what value that they have. Uh, like I Does, can imagine, I can imagine working in Ubisoft France is probably a lot better than working in Ubisoft America because France has a lot better union rules and U.S. is like unions are basically communism and communism is basically akin to like traitorous against the United States. So like does California have you, a you, right to work rules? Uh, right. What? What do you mean? Right uh, to... So, yeah, there's there's uh, as far as I know, in the U.S., there's these these group of mean, laws uh, or something. The, uh... It's um, like one of those infuriatingly mean, named things that basically mean that means the can, opposite like, of what can, it says it means. Yeah, you mean that they can fire you without any cause? No, it has to do with um I think basically it's if you if you belong to a union or rather whether or not you belong to a union this is an oversimplification, but whether or not you belong to a union uh doesn't matter for if you get the benefits that the union negotiates with the bosses. So basically if you belong to the union and the union says that uh they're members now earn five dollars more an hour then if you get those five hours or five dollars an hour but people who don't belong to that union and also work in the same for the same company also get those five dollars and uh, the way they they do those uh, laws they use those laws to basically this is this incentivize people from paying their union dues and belonging to unions and as far as i'm aware california does uh if if a union if a union argues for something everyone gets it so that's the same um, problem, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so... Yeah, because it's a system uh, that was designed to defund unions. Yeah, to yeah. cut them but off. But it's, yeah. it's, it's one of those many things where they try to make something sound like it's good for workers and it's actually making things way worse. But, mm -hmm. I mean, it's... Like the, the recent thing, though, Grubhub like, thing. You have to... Yeah, the... Uh, and Uber, Lyft and everything. Uh, Uber and all that stuff. The, the idea is that you need to... Well... And again, there's a, I, I mean, there, again, this comes back to as much as I, as much as I think it's scummy, there is a level of blame. You have, you, you have to reasonably leave a level of blame on the consumer. You have to leave, you have to like put the bag of shit at their front porch and go, look, you keep stepping this every day and you could avoid it at any point. Like, I know it's not going to be fun. I know it's going to suck. And maybe it could result in a bad situation. You may slip down the stairs and fall and break your neck. But you can't, you like, but alternatively, you're just stepping in shit every day. And like, you're doing that on purpose. And you know you're doing that on purpose. And there is an well, option. Well, do they know like, that they're they doing it? Yes. They, there's no so much a, no information. One, no one doesn't know unions exist. That's not a thing. But, uh, yeah, but it, what does it mean to be unionized? You, it means that you all anybody. together, as a union, as a unified body of people called a union, you walk up to an employer and go, look, bud, you either fucking do this. Or you don't have fucking employees, then, which means you don't make money. And like but that's what I'm saying. Store, then they like, say, then they say, "Oh, but I like my boss. I don't need to be in your union because my boss is nice." Or they say, "I don't, don't want to pay my dues because I have child support it, to pay." It doesn't matter. Okay, well, first of all, that's it's, not how that works. Uh, no, if, what I mean, it, it's it's expensive for one to belong to a union, or it is more expensive in the short term than not belonging. But the point is, there's so much so much misinformation, so much money dumped into making sure that people don't believe in the effectiveness, or even it's not even believing in the effectiveness of unions. It's understanding what the unions are for. Like even the way you put it, while it is true that you you know you work as a union or as a, a unit uh, unit when you're in negotiations with the people who employ you. But what exactly does that mean? You're putting it in a way that, you know, it's kind of difficult to for, for just to immediately understand how it works. And, uh, it, and it's, a, it's normal. A union, that... a union exists to give you better everything in your job, better as wages, far as I can tell... better time off, better benefits, better fucking management, better yeah. employment status. Everything only gets better when you have a union backing you up 
because and, and the best example of this in but, the fucking United yeah. States is a goddamn police union. How fucking hard is it to get these goddamn motherfuckers fired? Look at it every fucking day. And you go like, wow, how come yep. how come we can't literally stop people with fucking guns from killing other people? Well, there's a fucking union and they're really strong. That could be you. That could literally be you <laughs> in your fucking job with a gun yeah. and they can't fire you because you have a fucking union behind you. Unionize. That, uh, like <laughs> What I'm saying is there's so much propaganda against unions that when you say what you said, and I agree with you and says that it, the unions exist to make again, you as a worker have more rights and have better a better quality of life. If somebody tells me, yeah, I don't believe you when and, I say and this and when you say this, like, okay, they, then, they're saying that not because it, it came out of their head that they're saying this. They say, say, they say this because they live in a society that trained them to be suspicious of any of this conversation that we're having right now. You know Unless I mean? you live so, in an Amish culture where you do not have access to the internet, you have no excuse for this. Go on the fucking internet, go to Google and type in union, and you're going to find a lot of information about unions, both bad and good. It's not and as you can simple definitely as that. You know it. Well, he's, make, he's, making, re- he's making the everybody should be able to repair their toasters you, argument from yes, like 10 you episodes have to, ago. You need to be able to research on your own accord. You need to be able to look but at things and not believe everything. Can I just, can I just stop value. for a second? Because I can I just, yes. to, just to clarify this. So as far as I can tell, California is not a right to work state. In fact, okay, thank you. if you look at the oh, map for right to work states, it's very noticeably south. Uh, the it's very noticeably the Republican states. So it's the middle of the country Oops, and the yeah. south of the country, whereas the top right and the and the west coast are all uh, blue because they they just, use, they just use the same color scheme as they use for Republican and Democrat that they use for right to work and not right to work, and it looks about the same. Uh, so yeah, the West Coast is not right to work. The entire t- the entire Northeast is not right to work, and there's just kind of like a scattering in the middle here and there of not right to work. But yeah, very noticeably, like Texas, Florida, and so on, like that's all that's all right to so, work. And uh, if you look at a separate map that shows uh, unionization rates, there's a direct correlation between the ones that uh, are right to work all having very very low uh, unionization rates. California has one of the higher rates, which is still only 16%. Unionization is incredibly low just in general. The highest unionized state in the entire union is Hawaii, which in 2019 Mm. was 23.5%. I mean, probably, you know... I, I would have, I it, would I would wonder how many of that is because people you know that are natives what living I'm saying, there are like wait a second this is my fucking what I'm house. Saying, Andrew, <laughs> what I'm saying, Andrew, is that this isn't about individual choice as much as it is about systemic issues, not just in terms of education and propaganda, but also how the system itself of people putting of putting people so much on the edge that they can't afford two hundred dollars a month out of their. It's not two hundred dollars well, a month. Well, it depends not, on no, what union you union want. dues are in, are in are small amounts over long periods of time. You don't just upfront cost like a huge chunk, fucking chunk of your uh, bill or your uh, paycheck. The idea is that in a year you'd pay seven hundred dollars, and like sure, or, the argument yeah, is like, right, uh, or you could say that you could have seven hundred dollars at the end of the year exactly, to buy an exactly. Xbox, uh, but no, you won't because you're a fucking idiot and you're going to use all of it to pay for your stupid fucking rent which is so fucking high because the only thing that doesn't change is your fucking wage like uh, this isn't this is just basic fucking math oh, cool you could go buy an xbox if only you didn't have to live like if yeah. only you didn't have to then you could afford the xbox but like or you could go in a union and then you can both afford to live and you can get an xbox you could literally do both it's crazy it's almost like more money I'm not means arguing you could against, have more things. Like, I'm not arguing against the legitimacy of what you're saying. I'm just saying that people never get to that stage of thinking like that. Just and research. Why th- just fucking go online. Look this shit up. Like, just just look at they, how much a union costs. Do the math. You could literally sit down with a fucking calculator and just do the math at how much money you would spend versus how much money you would earn based on the potential out like increase. But, like, take another union. Go look at, like... I don't know, an electrician's union and see how much money that or how much their wages increase per year based on the amount uh, of like, in, you know, how big the union is or whatever, how much their dues are versus mm-hmm. how much money they get increased. Like I, you could I, you live in a world where there's so much fucking available information. It's like the idea that you would go, well, Walmart told me that it was bad to do unions. It's like, 
What the fuck? What do you mean Walmart told you is bad? Walmart also fucking doesn't give a shit if you died tomorrow. But like, they like their the, boss. The, the, <laughs> you know, no one the likes their is... boss. It's a fucking lie. I don't. No, no. I so, have a really not. I had a really so, nice certainly boss. Certainly not people who work at Walmart. I don't care about him more beyond the fact that he didn't <laughs> fucking punish me. No, I'm just. Me. That's I'm just it. coming like, up with it as examples because there are so many systemic pressures also, for people. Your, your to boss not do is making more money than you, and he's doing so because you don't unionize. The Which, average union dues appears to be four hundred dollars per year. Thank you. Holy shit! Four hundred dollars a year? Yeah, a that's year. Average, though. A fucking year. That's that is literally less than most car payments are. It was also a summarized month. as being no. about two hours of wage per month. What? That no oh, per month, right? Two hours. Two fucking. This is this is what I mean. This is like at some point you have to put the bag of shit on someone's front door and go. Look, this is what you're it's stepping in every people. day. Stop fucking doing it. Like the bag of shit on. is on the people who train everybody to be like this. It's not the American people the aren't fuck is naturally anti-union. It's the freaking the freaking bosses in the the, the lobbies. You know that. Don't. It's not the American people don't, are not born anti-union. They don't like oh, it's in my blood. I can't. You know what I mean? I, I have or the, the only time I've ever heard anti cult. The only time I've There's ever so heard many, about yeah. anti-union propaganda is at a job that didn't want me to unionize. Oh I, no, I've, my I've parents, basically never like, heard anyone advocate for, yes, for unions, even though I live in California. I, everybody is I, everybody is pretty specifically anti-union because it's just thought of as being the right way to do. I, and it's not just... I, it's, I, like, it's, like, it's like with road around, workers. Like unions are literally... Yeah. The stereotypical union worker is somebody who just doesn't do any... doesn't do their job, actively makes the work, the workplace worse, but can't get fired for it. Like that's... That's that's the narrative. <laughs> yeah, because it's not just in personal life. It's also in movies and TV series and just offhand comments here and there. Like, I absorb the anti... Like, as a personal uh, Portuguese person who doesn't watch movies a lot and doesn't watch much television, I see the anti... Union propaganda from the U.S. Yeah, like, no, it's, it's a, it. and people just repeat it uncritically, and I'm, but the whole time I'm yeah, like, yeah. nope, I remember history class, I remember when we talked about the company store and shit like that, which is why I was like, holy shit, they're doing it, when uh, Outer Worlds did it, I'm like, oh, fuck, yeah. we're going back, but uh, <laughs> like, a lot I, of people forget all that history lesson, and then they're like, yeah, unions are bad, even though it's the only reason why our jobs are bearable today. Yeah, yeah or, yeah. So many, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. unions are the only reason you have that fucking weekend that you beg you had more. Of. <laughs> yes, like weekends. I don't, I don't know why you don't get more weekends, you fucking idiot. Maybe it's because you don't have unions. Like again, it's, it's not like it, it, this isn't hidden information. This isn't like locked in some fucking Disney vault that only shows up every twenty fucking years to go. Hey, unions existed, and then it goes away, and you're like, oh, I guess a whole generation will never know about unions. It's in your fucking goddamn history book. In your fucking internet, just look it up. Well, like it shit, might not dude. be in everybody's history this is, book. It's th this is like the same. And again, it, like if it, okay, it doesn't take one person knowing about unions doesn't mean anything. But again, you can also communicate to your fellow workers and go, "Hey, dude, what if we could all buy a fucking new Xbox next year because we all made a union and fucked over the goddamn uh, higher ups at this company?" Like, doesn't that sound cool? Doesn't it sound fun to like turn around and fuck the shit out of the people that like manage you? You could turn around like the people that you've never met that are sitting there with like more money than you could ever have. You could turn around and go fuck those guys and you could take Xboxes from them personally. Go do that. Go to your job right now and steal Xboxes from your fucking employer by <laughs> stealing money from them. Like Just that's nice. All... It's better. It's 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 like it, you could... I guess I'm editing this podcast. <laughs> I, I'm not saying steal an actual Xbox. I'm saying like you, you do, can get though, them. But you, you just advocate murder and theft on this podcast every now and then. I'm not, no, I'm not saying murder. Out. I'm not saying actual steal. An, I'm saying go. You make a union. You take money. Uh, you take more money out of the company, which means there's less money they can pay in bonuses and shit to hire up management. That's there's, the whole point of unions. The idea is that also, it keeps the money balanced within a company. It means that people can't have huge wealth disparities because people have to be paid in good amounts all across the board of your company. There can't be people who just get low wages. There are people who have to either earn a living wage or a little bit more than a living wage. But you can't have gratuitous fucking wages in a unionized setting. It just doesn't work that way. Like, that's the, that's the fucking thing. Like... We do and, desperately and need. Saying, we do, do desperately yeah. need like scaling wages. Like, and the, if, and the joke if your I'm company saying, and, is wildly successful, 
there should definitely be rules about what you have to pay your employees instead of just continually pocketing it. Yes. Because having it just I mean, not trickle down at all is like, what What the fuck? <laughs> what the actual fuck? Like, the, the prestige the, of working at, like, one of the most successful companies in the world, it's like, yeah, well, they're successful because they don't fucking pay you, so fuck you. You might as well have worked anywhere else. You know, the, the, right reason, that, the reason I'm making US a joke has, about the Xbox is because that's a that was an old uh that was an old advertisement was that like say don't join a union save your money buy an Xbox that was like yeah a, that was that a was, joke that's why Best I'm Buy? saying like Which steal the it? Xbox uh that was from uh United Airlines they uh oh. they they said don't don't join the air uh, the airline union you can save seven hundred dollars and that's enough to buy a video game console. And so that's like, like that's why I was saying the joke of like just go steal also, the fucking not, Xbox you could you, you could understand get that him. Money. Sorry? Huh? You responded to what he was saying, and I was like, what? You can understand what he was saying? Oh, yeah, I was. Oh, no, yeah. look, every time you guys talk at the same time, Colonel turns into, like, oh, sorry. cell phone interference noises. <laughs> oh. I can't Not hear a single word he's saying, and I can't. I don't know what the fuck is wrong with Discord. Do you update Discord? I don't know. Does it even <laughs> update? I've never seen it update. It just does its thing. Well, no, Keith what, what a, I was Keith saying has a habit of not updating anything. I mean, you can't what tell Discord not is, to update. Yeah, well, yeah. If you true. don't close it, it never updates. I restart my computer <laughs> does and it? stuff. Okay. Uh, so what what I was gonna say regarding what Keith said is that, like, specifically talking about the U.S., you guys have such tremendous problems in regards to, like, it, yes, you need you need better, well, you need to fix the wealth disparity between the lowest paid and the highest paid in a company. But you can't even pass the freaking fifteen hour, fifteen dollars an hour bill. Yeah, no, we're fine. And, you, you, and like, and that, that's um, like the whole thing. I've been following that that scenario. The, the whole yeah. thing is just how many, like, you need to. It, it that, what Andrew said, talking to each other. That's up there with the anti-union settlement. Like everybody has been conditioned to argue against their best interests. Yeah, the idea. Yeah, the idea that everyone could earn fifteen dollars an hour is uh, in is in think is unthinkable because it would put out so many businesses out of business and then you it have wouldn't. to go but <laughs> it but, wouldn't well, it's the most but, but the, that it will and it, sorry go no it's just so i was just re retracting like it won't put business out of business it's the, it's like a, a one to five percent impact in the current which is a terrible economic economy right now in the current economy of the united states there there are studies made about this stuff as far back as I think, I think the 70s or, or no, it wasn't the 70s. When was the last like big jump like that? There's like, what, this is between, so well studied. Between minimum between, uh, minimum wage? Yeah, minimum wage. That was like, uh, if you look at the correlation between minimum wage with uh, the inflation. Around, yeah, it's around the, around the 70s. Yeah, I think it was the 70s. Yeah, there, there's studies that, that go as far back as that because precisely it's, a, it's an issue that people are rightly worried about you know you don't want business to go out of business but like this is so well understood by economists all over the world in including in the us they're just lying you go they go to television and they say all these things that you are saying but obviously you're just you, i'm not saying you're defending them right now i'm just saying they, they go onto television and say this and just this just bold-faced lie they 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 masquerade as having an opinion that this is going to bring businesses down it's not an opinion it's it's like there's no evidence whatsoever there's evidence to the contrary that it, i mean there are there's obviously going to be businesses that can't pay the current employees that they have and so yes there are jobs that are going to be lost but in the long run not only is more wealth going to be created there are going to be more jobs because of it because the thing with the minimum wage stuff is that it brings the floor up to a level where it creates more business for the vast majority of companies because the you need to think of like a, a jeweler for example so it's not going to get any benefit from yeah, it, it improves the economy because well, people actually have money to spend it's it's also like there's a, there's a noticeable a uptick for the economy every time minimum wage goes up like there's no argument yes. here more jobs yeah. are created because the thing is uh, just to finish my point a jeweler doesn't see any benefit or downside of a minimum wage increase ever because it's a luxury thing. They pay more than than minimum wage to their people, and like the only the only downside that they would have is if the people mining their their jewels and their things back in Africa or whatever, if they were paid properly, then they would be they, they would have a downside. But that's not what we're talking about here. The luxury items don't. Don't, are not affected it's the small businesses or it's and not just the small business but more importantly the small businesses that see the biggest impact because people all of a sudden and not necessarily all of a sudden but over time they get 
more income. And instead of being strapped and being like, oh, I'll put off going to the dentist for another year or I'll I'll not get get gas for the car or go to the the go to the shop to fix whatever I need in the car and all that sort of stuff. They just people will have more money to spend and it's just better for the economy, not just in terms of wealth, but also in terms of jobs. And it's like this happens time and again. And you look at Europe and you look at, at precisely how healthy small businesses are in your in European countries. And you see that the countries with lower minimum wages have unhealthier small businesses than countries with m better minimum wages. Asian Asian cultures have the exact same thing. Exactly. Uh, it, it, Japan is a fuck ton full of small businesses. Every corner is filled with a fucking small business. And it's most because everyone makes enough money to afford to do those things. They can go out to eat. They can go shopping and buy stuff like yeah that that's the thing is if people have money they spend the money like people <laughs> yeah but we have the, we have our we have our essential workers paradox where we shame people for working at any of these things and and it's like well that's not supposed to be a long-term job you're supposed to like only do that as a kid to learn for a bit then move on but simultaneously we call these the essential workers and they ha they, they don't they don't get to like take breaks during covid and they have to like keep their jobs and keep all those things functioning because like fucking society will shut down if those things aren't happening so we're completely dependent on these people that we basically actively mm -hmm. abuse yeah well, yeah you just move the baton from one or you, you just keep moving the baton for like what is considered uh less than human and so like ah oh, you need more jobs you just need to work more jobs to survive that's your fault and it's like well no you kept it's, raising the prices for everything else but my wage, so now I can't afford to do it but have multiple jobs. It's like, yeah, but that sounds like your problem. It's like, uh, it's like uh, the de facto mandatory opposite side of the spectrum of the American dream. Like, you're going to pull yourself up by your bootstraps and be a billionaire one day and so on and so forth. But so the at least to that, like, people who said that never did that. No. So at least to the fry no, meme yeah. of, like, yo, like, those poor people better watch out. Like, well, you're not rich fry. Yeah, but one day I might be. And then people like me better watch out. It's like you, it's, everyone thinks they're going to be rich one day and, and that, and that they're, they're sold this idea that can work that way. Just like how they're sold the idea that college helps most people. Uh, but in order to, to fuel that narrative, you, we have to just shit on, on everybody that works bottom jobs. Anyone that's that's near the bottom side of that spectrum that isn't the desirable ones. They can't make real wages and they can't feed their families and, they, and it can't be a place that somebody could comfortably stay because it has to fuel the narrative that there's a spectrum from shitty, undeserving jobs and beautiful top level jobs that totally matter. Even though the top, the highest paying jobs are pretty consistently the least necessary for society and usually they're actively exploiting something or cheating the system to even make that much money and they're just kind of sitting on top of a company that does the real work for them. That's the real that's the real irony is that dragons on the, hordes. People who are stereotypically the ones working for unions are the ones that are not doing anything by the roadside but the freaking people who are paying them are not doing anything because they're the company owners that just mooch off of their workers and like nobody questions it it's like every time somebody says oh i don't want those government bureaucrats controlling my thing but they, they will say nothing about the jeff bezos of the world controlling their thing they're completely unaccountable unelected super rich people that control so much they have so much power because you know at the end of the day vote with your wallet is still a thing it works in, under capitalism and that's just how it works at the end of the day and their wallet their vote is just a lot more powerful than yours because you know who invented yeah. vote with your wallet fucking capitalists did yeah <laughs> it's, a shitty, it's a market it's a dynamic shitty fucking phrase and it means it's nothing a, and doesn't have no, any weight it's like the shittiest mean, fucking like it does like mean when, culture when you, it's like oh yeah that's really working out <laughs> sw uh, swell good job there guys uh, yeah. No, I mean, I, I'm using it from a, from an analytical perspective. The whole just mantra of it being it's oh, liberal just civility. I, yeah, yeah. But I'm I'm so, because you know there is a certain value to your money and to the way you choose to spend it. And yeah, but it also value, encourages you to protest things in entirely passive ways that don't do that's anything. Right. Yeah, like that's don't right. don't don't vote with your wallet. Vote like in person. Like in, <laughs> go do that in person, please. <laughs> Like no, uh, in, under COVID you should do the, the Those are mail in ballots. 
Yeah, but, but no, but that's the thing. Is like that, people that just snapped. It, the, <laughs> the idea is that like you're you you have this control with your mo- money, which decides things, but you don't. <laughs> but you, you absolutely but have control no control just, because yeah, what are you going to do? Like, you're you're drowning gonna go buy... in cash. Don't drown. Use a snorkel. <laughs> it's like, the, but like you, you broke the, that metaphor on your knee by just I, I'm, ending I'm the saying, sentence in the literal version of what the words meant. <laughs> I, I'm saying like no, but like really, if you want if you want to change things, you have to go fucking actually vote. You don't do yeah. it with your money. You don't. You have to physically yourself go change, like pick a different person. Yeah, no. Because, vote like, with your money. Only... No, vote with your money was never supposed to be applicable to things where you can actually vote. Yeah, no, but that I, was I talking meant, like, about I, I, commerce. I, and no, and I'm your saying opinions about, with commerce, like, for example, you can't like, do that because, like, it's because well, yeah, when you because go clearly with... everyone votes so poorly that here we are with loot boxes and battle passes. Yes. Also, the fact that not, like a, some enough, some products not aren't cross even. Applicable. Like almost all products, well, depending on what field you're in. So like say grocery, <laughs> if you don't like one thing, too fucking bad. There's only like five companies to pick from. They just make a shit ton of products with different but that's, su- uh, subsidiary companies. So you can't like, because I'm not going to buy Kellogg's products. I'm going to go buy. Uh, like a, how mattresses oatmeal, like, are just the same yeah. products being rebranded like, over and over again by the same yeah, company what, competing what with you themselves. Vote with your wallet. This shit's all monopolies all the way down. It's like you get the fuck out of here. You got to you got to vote someone in who's going to break that shit up and then you can vote with your wallet. Like, no, I can't. How that, do you vote for your wallet with with Internet provider? Uh, you get two options, and uh, the other fuck options you. are actually just the like, same company. <laughs> yeah, the other options is just you. a company renting the lines from that company you don't want to support. Well, fucking good job there, my bud. Problem, <laughs> like, <laughs> my, pro- my problem with vote with your wallet is that it it makes you blind. And I was using it. I was using it in a specific context, not in the commonly used context. It, is that it makes you blind to the wallet size disparity between the company owners and the people who actually make decisions in the companies that you're trying to vote for or against. And your wallet, like your bo- vote is just, no, it's just small. It, it it's it's nothing. It's the know, difference I between. I don't trust the fact that people who make like seventy dollars an hour get to determine if someone deserves fifteen dollars an hour or not. I'm not really thinking that you're in the 70? field. Of, that's uh, not even that much of relatability. Yeah, but that's like, not re- that's not related to vote with your wallet. No, no, I'm I'm just saying. Yeah, like, yeah. It, When yeah. when it comes to money, like the, the whole thing about trying to you know get the most out of your dollar to try to use your economic your status as an economic con- or as a consumer to change things is like yeah but there are people who are like so beyond your like so beyond relatable to you that are deciding how much money you'll have at the end of the day and it's like fuck all right great good awesome this is like so like it doesn't yeah, it, oh, yeah the worthwhile. people that determine the policy of every state are largely the type of <laughs> They're like not the, people that like should the, be like determining your money. They're like the mom from Arrested like, Development that are like, what, it's just a banana. What could it cost, $15? <laughs> like, they have no idea what reality yeah. is. That, that was like the, do you remember, uh, probably, no, do you remember? No, you don't. Uh, back in the day, one of the, one of the big questions that they used to ask presidents was how much milk and bread cost. And they did that because that was supposed to be a, a litmus test for if you were a fucking actual human being or not. Because if you show up and you're like, I don't know, bread's like 15 bucks, right? You'd be like, who the fuck <laughs> here get the fuck out of here this guy's like crazy he doesn't even know how much fucking bread costs you can't lead a country <laughs> like because you don't have you don't actually have connection to the people that you're supposed to be representing and that was like the whole point and we just stopped doing that because at some point we just stopped giving a shit we just like i just, it doesn't fucking matter everyone's bad might as well just not give a i'm shit. so bad that even i don't know how much bread costs Depends on where you go. So bread well, is usually yeah, obviously around. there's a ton of prices, but it's it's just so the fact that I was the... like even when I was living in poverty, and I was like, but like fake poverty, like my money, like I was I was poverty levels of money, like the numbers were poverty, but I, my life was fu- it was fine. I was fine. I was just living in a shitty little room, <laughs> and I was doing my weird jobs, but I wasn't like, what am I gonna do to survive the month or anything? But numerically, I was in poverty, and. Yeah. Still, it was just like I, food is just a fact of life. So when I go gro- when I go grocery shopping to this day, and it's always been this way, I just I just buy what I need to buy, and then oh. I'm like, oh, that's what the total is, huh? And then I just, <laughs> that's that's it. Like oh. I don't even check the prices of things because it's just I, like that's that's what I gotta get. That's what we do. I know the price of everything I buy. Bread is a dollar is like around a dollar fifteen to a dollar twenty three, depending on your product. Eggs how, is how, about. How, how, Oh, is about, I assume it's a uh, loaf. That's a loaf, yeah. A loaf yeah. of bread. So that's about, I think it's about like 24 slices of bread. That's surprisingly um, cheap. 
that's the uh, same price as here in Portugal. Yeah, uh, eggs are about a dollar fifteen, uh, and that's for two, four, six, eight of them. Um, I would honestly would have guessed. Eight? I would have. I would have guessed like three or four dollars for both of these. It might, I'm sorry. It might be. It might be twelve. Uh, mm -hmm. Might be. Tw no, I think it's. I think it's eight. Uh, maybe. I thought it, yeah. For me, my only goal eggs. with buying groceries but, is that I will consume all of them. But but the if thing I, is, if I don't like, fuck up and waste anything, then I'm like, I'm, I'm it's fine. I'm doing fine. Well, <laughs> and I mean, the, but the thing is, That's is like my, when my way. But when I buy stuff, like when I especially food, food is the one. Food is my fucking biggest. I hate spending money on food. It's such a fucking waste of money. <laughs> It's like an absolute I, waste. It's like all I do like, is work and like, food is my money. But that's money. the thing. It's like, but food doesn't do anything. And then you, the, you consume it and it keeps you alive, I guess. But at the end of the day, you just shit it out. What a fucking absolute waste. <laughs> I don't want to do that. I don't want to. Like, that's not gonna why spend. you either buy the crappiest food cheapest or the most oh. chocolatey one. I, I just oh, buy, I buy food. Both bad that advice. Is, don't listen to Colonel. That's he's, what I he's do. Literally, I, he's literally worse than Andrew somehow. I, yes. I buy food that is of so here here's a non shitty advice, unless it's something very very specific to you like something that you you cannot live without the taste of, always try to buy the store brand of a product because oh, of all they do is they rip open someone else's bag and pour it into their own fucking box and they put a fucking small it's a much cheaper price tag because they get a huge hundred percent profit from it all. So always go for like bread, eggs, uh, milk. Well, eh, not milk, I guess, because I don't think milk they they do locally. But like bread and stuff, bread and eggs, you and do sometimes mil uh, you most do local, local milk. Most, all of our uh, milk's so, pasteurized. Yeah, all of our milk's pasteurized. So like a lot of it comes it comes from the same well, state. It should be, uh, but even but it's oh, not. It's, okay, it's not okay. from the. But it's yeah. not from like Rayleigh's doesn't make their own milk. Uh, yeah, I understand. I understand. Uh, so that, that's what I'm saying. Like, but Rayleigh's makes their own bread. They make their own bread. They make oh, yeah, their own yeah. like they have their own uh, uh, tomato sauce, mac and cheese, uh, t frozen pizzas. They have a ton of fucking their own label shit. Buy that mm -hmm. stuff because it's genuinely cheap and it doesn't matter because it's food. So it doesn't it, it tastes fine. It tastes like normal food. It just doesn't <laughs> have the whatever weird preservative they put in Kraft macaroni and cheese that makes the cheese that's not even real cheese tastes like something that's not real cheese. This like, is coming from Andrew. All wine tastes like grapes, Wilson. It's it, no, it, it all doesn't. does. All wine tastes like grapes. It's all shitty what grapes. What is this? It's. It, like, I will fly over to Canada, and you will fly to. I don't know where he. I don't know where he finds the shitty grapes. It's all bad grapes. I, but, I will te teach you what good wine is. We just need to move to Canada. Oh, I hate wine, but I've just never found grapes that tasted like anything like wine. They don't. Wine doesn't taste like grapes. What? It tastes like fucking drinking? sour grapes. I don't know how you don't taste oh, that. Oh, sour grapes. Well, well yeah. Uh, what other kind of grapes would it taste like? You don't eat sweet grapes? Like normal grapes? No, I prefer, I prefer... Uh, I prefer... Well... I guess they're technically purple, but uh, the dark red grapes. The ones well, that are a yeah, lot but more, they can uh, be sweet. Whatever. Yeah, color, I don't, I don't, I don't like sweet. sweet. I don't like sweet grapes or apples. Green grapes. I prefer. Mm. Uh, I prefer more bitter. Uh, yeah, bitter any fruit. grapes. Yeah, I see. I see what you mean. I see what you mean. Huh. Um. So that's, okay. That's no, why I don't like then. it. Yeah, I don't. I don't. I. It all wine tastes like sour grapes, and I don't like it. I don't want any. You know, I don't want anything mm. to do with it. Uh, it's kind of like how uh, applesauce. I don't really like applesauce because it all tastes like sour apple, and I hate it. I don't fucking want that. I want like. <laughs> I want boring, bland tasting fruit because I like cinnamon applesauce. The one I've uh, nice. the one I the one I'm eating right now is blueberry applesauce, and it's more blueberry than apple, so it works out. Those blueberry uh, sauce. Yeah, it's like blue. It's basically blueberry sauce, but they call it blueberry applesauce. I'm like, all right, so I guess you put an apple in there, and that was enough. Like, <laughs> but that that's that I like. But it's a uh, no. But like, but food should be food. You should not be spending more money on food than you do on anything else like food should just be a normal amount of money spent like you what does that mean <laughs> so if if, if you would like it, the so like that... the amount you spend on your hobbies How and your food, food? You, know, you know normal it's normal it's a block i just no, like, a block so, <laughs> so when you, when i buy food like for a month i i spend 150 dollars on food you know that is for a month word. fucking mm, stephanie always quotes this as like yeah, I just had like a block of cheese before, before the date. You know, like a block. It's like, it's like, what, what do you mean a block? What does a block mean? You know, you know like a block. <laughs> like, like just this bizarre, this horrifying metric of, of like, like he describes the amount of cheese he ate before his date as a block. And you're like, what the <laughs> fuck? 
And he just keeps repeating himself. You know, normal, normal, normal mac cheese. Uh, I don't <laughs> think a block of cheese is normal. You I think just, they're talking about No, it's not. A block no. is so enormous. much a block of cheese. Is enormous. Enormous. That's way yes. too much cheese. Yeah. <laughs> Usually, you usually they use like six slice or six uh, uh, grates of a block of cheese for like a burrito, and that's still not even like a a, a dent in your cheese block. Yeah, it's very. So little. if you're eating a whole cheese block, that's a that's a little worrying. Like a block. Yeah. Uh, but no, like food food should not be you, you should not be spending a lot of money on food uh, unless you're doing something wrong. Like food well, food is absolutely a cheap thing that you could. Like, like I, I get by, I, like I get by, I get by with less than two hundred dollars like a month on food. And holy shit! It depends on... No, it's not holy shit. I, <laughs> I eat a sandwich every day for for lunch. I have uh like for snacks. I have like grapes. It's, it's worth have... it's worth bringing up in this conversation that you have like food issues though. Yeah, but I've no. I've put on, since I've like I've like put on like you're chronically pounds underweight recently. and you hate eating and so on. I I know, but I'm I'm up to one hundred and thirty pounds now. I I've actually in I've increased the amount of food that I've eaten. It's progress. I, I'm not two of you I, anymore. Yeah, <laughs> and I'm still I'm still paying less than two hundred dollars a month on groceries, and it's like you just have yeah, to, but you're still you're like coming from there though. Like it's a different perspective. A lot of people like food, Andrew. That's upsetting. That's like, a waste. I, like you should. Find, I don't know uh, about you, you. Should do. I'll like have a hobby. I'll have a day where I'm looking forward to ordering like the sweet and sour fish fillet, and I'm like oh that'll just capstone this day, and like please please just get that over here. Food Fucking, is like. Yeah. Like sweet food. and sour, sort of like it's almost like deep fried, like fish fingers or something from like a Chinese place. I'm like, yes, fucking give me those with some pot stickers. Food's an obstacle. It's just a hurdle I have to overcome in order Taiwanese to Taiwanese tea. <laughs> like it's, I think it's the, the Ta- Taiwan milk tea or something. Shit. Food's too fucking expensive half the time. It's not worth that much, man. Just food. You, I don't Shit. know. What, um, I mean, yeah, especially with like the last expensive. year we've had, it's like one of the only things that's good anymore. <laughs> I mean, you, gotta, yeah. you have to live at some point. Eh. Just eat those fries it's, and the chocolate. But that's the thing is like, I don't, I don't. That's what I do. What? Like I, you can, you can, if you're, if you're willing to put the time in, you can just like, I, I make everything at home. That's the way I keep it cheap. Is yeah, I just, that's how I just, we, yeah. I just yeah. order. I just don't order food out because what's the fucking, I'm not, I'm not going to tune into about, cooking with Andrew for context. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you could, but it's, most of the time yes. it's bad. Uh, it's always me like, failing in some capacity. Well, Today I am preparing one cup out. of noodles. I, like I, I recently bought like a cast iron uh, skillet so I could actually start making some good stuff, and I fucked that up, and now it rusted. What, so I have to the, re-season it. And this fucking cast iron out. skillet obsession that happened like over the last few years. What? This has to be like when the bacon lobby created a demand for for bacon out of scratch, right? <laughs> like the fucking cast iron skillet thing just fucking took off. Everyone's obsessing over cast iron skillets all the time for like the last two years. It's like a fucking meme at this point. Like somebody just oh. made somebody just fucking taste makes the world. Like when like that fucking like well, whenever I mean, deodorant was introduced to society. For, you know they've been around for like ever, right? Yeah, they've but like, suddenly like over the last like two years, everyone's getting cast iron skillet and talking about seasoning them stuff, and then like and like if you you use fucking soap to cook to to fucking uh clean something like I don't know, isn't that isn't that too invasive? Doesn't that ruin the season and stuff like that? Of like anything what? you like people are fucking No, obs- no, you need to people watch have, it with like, soap. People have like lost you, their minds lately. <laughs> Jesus Christ. It's a, a cast iron. I know that because it infected like this household thing. too. My brother was suddenly like, Oh my god, cast irons. It's like why is everybody suddenly freaking out oh. about cast iron sets? Uh, I, the reason I got a cast iron is because it's it has really good long term value. So a cast iron lasts. I'm convinced y'all just life. fucking watch the same YouTube but video. <laughs> no, I don't. I don't watch cooking videos because it's a waste brain of my time. infected you. It's, just, it's it's food. I don't care about it. The uh, I I just like I it because I only watch I, Anne Reardon. I I have a lot of or I had a lot of like nonstick pans, but the problem I noticed with nonstick is I keep going through them quickly, uh, because they just wear out. Uh, yeah. just by washing and stuff and so a cast iron is nice because it just stays there for fucking ever it never goes away and so it, I'm just at the point where like look I just need some kind of iron that doesn't go I just want to make like eggs you without having that. To, to like clean you, have you ever things. seen an aged have you ever seen an aged cast iron pen yeah my grandparents have one those things are like super mutants well if you're not <laughs> properly caring for it probably yeah yeah you should, I, 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 but you, 
Like you should be reseasoning them like every couple of years. Like you shouldn't be, you don't just accumulate yeah, the know, flavor. Like I people never... will tell you that you're supposed to just let the flavor pack on like some no. kind of disgusting Unless you only flavor. use it for one food and even yeah. then it's questionable. No, no, no. You you should be reseasoning it every couple of years and just like getting yeah. it completely cleaned off and brand new again. And that like, the, again, the point is like, it adds a little like, ooh, spice to your whatever you're making, but it's not to supposed clean, to be you're supposed like... supposed to clean it with this annoying metal chain mail thing? Uh, well, okay, that so that depends on how fucking weird you are. You can clean <laughs> it with, like, the chain mail thing. You we can have a whole a set of brush. knives and a whole set of pans that Stephanie and I never touch because there's too many rules about how to use them, and we're just going to make people angry. Cast, cast iron rusts very quickly. It will do yeah. so if you do not clean it the proper way. It will immediately rust, and you have to reseason it, and it sucks because reseasoning takes way too much fucking time. Or specifically, but, there was the uh, enthusiast knife set, and then there was the normies knife set that everyone was supposed to use. Don't touch my super knives and whatever. But those ones also still had too many rules. So Stephanie just ordered another knife set online for like ten dollars, and we're both just using those from her drawer because so it's just like this pink knife because it's like we don't have to obsess over people being like really anal retentive about how to care for their special knives. And it's like yeah. this is too much. This is too much fucking preamble. People just want to be able to I cook just, quickly. Uh, there's only one rule the about knife knives, for everything. you don't put Except them in a washing machine. Bread. Oh, interesting. Uh, they, it dulls them. Putting, uh, huh. putting knives in a washing machine dulls the knives, so you have to sharpen them more frequently. But otherwise, like, you just wash it a knife like normal, put some soap on it, scrub it, da-da-da, done. Like, it's a knife. What the fuck do you want it to do? It's not going to go to space. It doesn't need it's to be, some of the like, oldest technology we've had. Yeah, you don't need to, like, take care of it like it's a newborn infant. It's not going to, like, crumble <laughs> on itself because you didn't... Uh, spray it with some lemon salt and then pray Both to it. Both sets of knives like, are like too fancy for a knife block, so they have like special things that they're what the holding. Fuck I'm is like, that? I'm like, too fancy so for a knife annoying. block? What is a knife block gonna do? It's gonna like get wood on it? What the fuck? Get out of One here. One of them looks like yeah, a yeah, DS it, screen, like where it's like pointed up but then slightly back, so it's at a slant and it's magnetic, so they're all like just laying against it. But like I bumped one of them once and it like fell the one inch down to the counter and just fucking gouged into the counter. Now there's just a fucking gouge there that i'll just never point out to anybody <laughs> like no one needs to know but it's like that's the fucking fancy mm. magnetic thing it's like one bump and it fucking stabs into the fucking uh table that it's on because you're not fucking putting it somewhere where it would stay safe anyway we desperately need to stop we're th yeah. <laughs> three hours in and like we have final fantasy in 40 minutes and speaking of all this cooking i need to do that so yeah Bye, everybody. Send bed. your questions in. Just kidding, you won't. But send them to dialoguechoicespodcast at gmail.com. No one has asked a question for like two in or like... three months. <laughs> yes. And to answer your questions, <laughs> no, we will not be forming a union on this podcast. No one has any. No one can. No questions. We're not. Actually, no, we're not taking questions at this time. Reverse psychology. Bleh. And the P.O. Mm. box is closed. It was never real to begin with. <laughs> mm. That's okay <laughs> it's all a, it's all a <laughs> ruse <laughs> oh yeah and uh if you're listening andrew got your letter whoever that was i didn't open it i just saw uh, that it was addressed to, it was addressed to andrew so i just put it in another envelope and sent it to andrew uh, yeah uh, and yeah, then he opened Green. that to get another envelope inside the envelope <laughs> that, that had I, the original I was... <laughs> I was confused. Yeah, I was like, "Oh, Keith sent me a letter from his PO box," and I opened it. and I was like, "There's another letter, but not from Keith." Okay. <laughs> so yeah, I did get that. Thank you. Thanks for watching, like always, guys, and we'll see you next time. Goodbye. Bye.